a very good morning to everyone i hope your studies are going on good welcome back so today we are going to discuss the amendment amendments for may 24 exams which are also applicable for november 24 exams so see basically we will divide the amendments into three broad baskets first hum log baat karenge any amendment in the gst law then second we will talk about customs law jisme very few amendments have happened and lastly we will be talking about two additional chapters which have been added i mean two topics one is ethics under gst and second topic would be goods rcm so two things have been added in your syllabus first focus will be to deal with amendments and amendments from first may 2023 to 31st october 2023 second we will deal with two topics ethics under gst and goods rcm both have been added and lastly duty drawback is not applicable is it sir yes duty drawback is not there for your exams everything else remains same so this deals with amendments from 1st may till 31st october 2023 now totally there were three pdf files i hope apne print out le liya hai now it's important that you have the print out of all the three pdf files okay great so the amendments are in a series like wherever i can make you do those changes in the pdf those pages as applicable in your book i have kept it there and balance all the amendments or some additional amendments are provided separately you have two options one you can do the amendments on these sheets or you can go to your main textbook and do these amendments on the page numbers which we are going to deal with so let's start with the amendments first one is on page 45 place of supply now place of supply section 39 has been deleted what was 13 line 39 used to deal with transportation of goods place of supply for transportation of goods now the place of supply transportation of goods is deleted iska impact kya hua the impact is that now transportation of goods will be covered under section 132 that is general provisions and general location of the recipient will be used as place of supply in case of transportation of goods so transportation of goods is completely deleted there used to be transportation of goods excluding mail or courier but abhi ekdam clarity hai it's very clearly given in the law that 139 will not be applicable there after a circular was issued that the place of supply for transportation of goods will be governed by the general provisions that is 132 that is the first change on this page 45 everything else remains same a 139 has been deleted completely now when we say transportation of goods you remember 13 when do we use it when do we use 12 we had read in place of supply section 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 7 deals with interstate supply 8 deals with intrastate supply Nine deals with territorial waters. Ten deals with place of supply for goods, domestic transactions other than import or export. Eleven place of supply for goods 
import and export transaction 12 when supplier and recipient are in india and the last one is when supplier or recipient is outside india so the first change is that place of supply 39 transportation of goods is deleted now it will fall under 13 2 and never forget one important aspect in transportation of goods who is the supplier supplier is always the transporter the person who is transporting the goods he is the supplier and who is the recipient recipient can be consigner or consignee depending on who is liable to pay freight suna aisa kuch clear with the first one okay so the first one 13 9 deleted transportation of goods stands deleted now it will be based on 13 2 okay great then come to the next page page number 46 now page number 46 13 12 a small change has happened what was 13 12 13 12 used to deal with oidar service say suppose facebook linkedin is providing services to us then what would be the place of supply for facebook or linkedin services being provided from an entity outside india we will go by that because we will have to keep one person outside india otherwise 13 will not apply see 13 can apply only when either the supplier or the recipient is outside india if we keep both in india then it will become a case of section 12 and that's why we'll keep one outside india say suppose linkedin is providing the services and linkedin is registered in singapore linkedin is providing services to my dear friend mr a and mr a is in mumbai ab here the service was access of linkedin accounts it qualifies to be o i d a r online information database access retrieval services now what had the law said it said do part ho sakta hai b2b transaction b2c transaction if it's a b2b transaction b2b registered person to registered person huh? for indirect taxes b2b always means registered person to registered person it does not mean business to business it's registered person to registered person then recipient that is mr a will pay tax under rcm this is what we had read b2c transaction we used to say supplier has to take registration in india and pay tax supplier has to take registration in india and pay tax under forward charge that means whenever it was a b2c transaction supplier that is linked in singapore will have to take registration in india and pay tax no other option available now this c that is consumer non taxable online recipient was defined in the law is cut definition earlier the definition was individual or any other person carrying on other than business includes government that was the definition earlier now the definition of non-taxable online recipient is made simpler so that we can cover more number of people so now it does not matter whether he's carrying on business not carrying on business it just says any person who is unregistered that's it they have made it very very simple so that more number of people can get covered under this consumer category because let me tell you why this this happened b2b means registered person to registered person so what government has done is b2c ka matlab hai registered person to unregistered person and consumer they have defined it as non-taxable online recipient any person who is unregistered then 
एक छोटा सा क्लैरिफिकेशन ऐड हुआ है गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट हु हैव टेकन रजिस्ट्रेशन ओनली फॉर टीडीएस विल आल्सो बी कवर्ड अंडर दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट विल नॉट पे अंडर रिवर्स चार्ज मैकेनिज्म इफ दे डोंट एक्सक्लूड गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट देन गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट हु हैज टेकन रजिस्ट्रेशन ओनली फॉर टीडीएस टीडीएस याद है यू रिमेंबर टीडीएस 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 वेयर गवर्नमेंट deducts tax so that they can track the transaction as to who is supplying to them and whether those suppliers are paying tax correctly to the government so government department which has taken registration only for tds will be included in this non assist non taxable online recipient now what is the change let me show it to you this was the old definition of non taxable online recipient this is the new definition let's have a look at the new definition and then you can make a note of the new definition old will not be required but new definition you can make a note let's first read it non taxable online recipient is any unregistered person receiving oidr service in the taxable territory person solely registered for tds under section 51 is unregistered person for this clause that means when you are providing services when linkedin is providing services to government department then in that case government department is not going to pay tax under rcm linkedin will have to pay under forward charge if government department is only registered for tds okay make a note of this ye likhiye done great then come to the next page this is page 47 page 47 at the end of the page you can see definition of oidr service what has happened earlier it used to say essentially automated and involving minimal human intervention this has been deleted so you will delete this essentially automated and involving minimal human intervention now you tell me after this deletion is it become broad or narrow exactly it has become broad wide ho gaya hai. because earlier there was a condition that essentially automated minimal human intervention but now it might not be essentially automated so even if it is not essentially automated still it might fall under the definition of oidr why has government done this sir obviously when it comes to tax collection government wants to keep these definitions as wide as possible so that we can include as many things as possible that's the simple reason behind this amendment and second online gaming other than online money gaming online gaming other than online money gaming we will talk about online money gaming in detail at the end after some time we will deal with online money gaming all the amendments related to online money gaming are kept separately that we will deal at the end now you just make a note ki oidar excludes online money gaming why sir online money gaming is regarded as goods is it yes online money gaming is regarded as goods we will deal with it and we are dealing with all the provisions related to online money gaming now just make a note online gaming other than online money gaming that means online money gaming is not oidar 
That is the only change. Okay. Okay, now next page, page 51. Page 51, 12, 8 used to deal with place of supply for transportation of goods. It is deleted. Is it, sir? Yes, completely deleted. Then 12, 8 deleted. So for transportation of goods, what would be the place of supply? Can you tell me what would be the place of supply for transportation of goods? Okay, exactly right. It would be based on general provision 12.2. Correct. And 12.2 na, both simple. Kya hai sir? 12.2, if it is provided to registered person, then location of registered person. If it is provided to unregistered person, then location of recipient. If that is not available, then in that case, it will be location of supplier. This is how you will deal with transportation of goods. Is it important sir? Very very important. First of all, all amendments are always important because most of the questions are drafted or it will contain some element of amendment for sure. And this amendment relating to transportation of goods which has been a very uh, favorite area of institute and that's the reason you may get a question directly on transportation of goods. Ab kahi nahi dekhna hai where it was taken on board. Nothing has to be seen. Registered, unregistered, it would be based on 12.2. Just don't make a mistake on who is the supplier and who is the recipient. That's the only place where you can make a mistake. And if you are aware of it, you will automatically not make a mistake. Remember, transportation of goods, the person who is transporting is the supplier. The person who is liable to pay freight is the recipient. Okay. Okay. Come to the next page. This is page 84. Now page 84. Composition levy. This is there in the amendments in future as well. Where all the amendments are written in detail. But composition na, there were persons who were not eligible for composition scheme. Try to recall. Persons not eligible for composition scheme. First of all, do you remember what is composition scheme? Ah, very well. You can pay tax at a lower rate. And as you can pay tax at a lower rate, you don't get input tax credit on your purchases plus you cannot collect tax from customer the limit is 1.5 crore 75 lakh for eight states and there is 10 to a 10 to a the limit is 50 lakh then we had dealt with a case where persons are not eligible for composition scheme you had written notebook mein likha tha. you had written this in your notes Point number three, persons not eligible for composition scheme. In that, na, you had various categories. Like if you are making an interstate outward supply, you are not eligible. If you are a manufacturer of pan masala, tobacco, ice cream, you remember this? Yes? Yes. Okay. Pan masala, tobacco, ice cream, aerated water, bricks and tiles. These were the five products. If you are dealing with non-taxable goods or services, if you are a CTP, casual taxable person or non-resident taxable person, or providing services more than specified limit, and the limit was 10% of turnover in a state of preceding financial year, or 5 lakh, whichever is higher. And usme ek point tha, which was persons supplying goods or services through e-commerce operator who is required to collect tax that is TCS now government has deleted the word goods from not eligible they have deleted the word goods that means can a person selling goods online can he take 
कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम दर इज यस अब आप ऑनलाइन बेच सकते हो इफ यू आर सेलिंग गुड्स यू विल नॉट बी बार्ड इफ फॉर कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम यू कैन टेक कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम इफ यू आर डीलिंग विथ गुड्स एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो सेल ऑनलाइन वाई एज गवर्नमेंट ऑन दिस सर देर इज अ इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज ग्रोइंग इन इंडिया हैव यू हर्ड ऑफ ओ एन डी सी ओपन नेटवर्क डिजिटल कॉमर्स ओपन नेटवर्क डिजिटल कॉमर्स दिस इज अ गवर्नमेंट बैक इनिशिएटिव देर इज ओनली वन एम दैट एवरी स्मॉल रिटेल शॉप should be able to sell online that is the aim of this ondc every small retail shop which is there in a near our house near our offices should be able to sell online that is the basic aim of open network digital commerce now open network digital commerce is a government backed initiative to give a push to it government wanted to allow goods suppliers that is that small retail shop to sell online but that small retail shop was under composition scheme tell me one thing to sell online will you shift from composition to regular as a retailer no sir 1% scheme such a good scheme never ever and that's the reason government made an amendment saying that if you are supplying goods through e-commerce operator you can still take composition scheme abhi thodi der ruko you will also learn that even goods supplier who is unregistered can also sell online that is the second amendment which we will deal with registration so the purpose is that a small retail shop should be able to sell online even if he is unregistered even if he is composition tax payer where can institute confuse you they will give you two parts a good supplier denge a service supplier tell me can service supplier supply through e-commerce operator and take composition scheme the answer is no that is where institute will try to confuse you i'll tell you the reason registration na completely different the provisions in registration is completely different there both goods as well as service suppliers can supply even if they are unregistered but composition services through e-commerce operator is not eligible for composition scheme very very important point make this change in your notebook or you write it on this page make a note of this here or make the change in the notebook kyunki notebook ka page number diya hua rahega you can just go there and delete the word goods ha correct restaurant services yeah restaurant services anyways allowed to take composition scheme if they are not selling online careful even today restaurants cannot sell online i mean cannot provide through swiggy zomato if they are under composition scheme na don't delete the example because example is just pointing towards something which has been uh, basically we are talking about a seller we are not talking about flipkart are we talking about the e-commerce operator or the person supplying through e-commerce operator we are talking about person supplying through e-commerce operator okay dan 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 dan
so can a good supplier who is under composition scheme can he take composition scheme as well as sell online the answer is yes he can take composition he can also sell online okay then page number 90 now this <coughs> now if you are providing both then you will not be eligible because even today services through e-commerce operator is not allowed so if you provide service through e-commerce operator then you will not be eligible okay page 90 now uh, page 90 you remember government related exemption government related exemption any service by government is exempt but there are four exceptions four limbs are taxable first three limbs was department of post then transportation of goods or passengers third aircraft or vessel related services whether inside or outside the port or airport aircraft or vessel related services and last one was any service other than one two three provided to a business entity and ab dekhega on page 19 you would have written taxable forward charge here and taxable reverse charge mechanism here check in your textbook where you had written everything you will find taxable forward taxable reverse yes sir we remember this okay abhi change kya hua hai sir bahut chota sa change hua hai indian railways now you understand one thing Indian Railways does it provide lot of services sir Indian Railways does it provide lot of services see one is ye wala, transportation of goods or passengers ye to provide karte hai. other than transportation of goods or passengers they provide stalls on rent they might allow some other internet player to lay connectivity lines they might allow renting of various immobile property they might sell various goods which are old or used goods Bahut kuch ho sakta hai. so Indian Railways does a lot of things now the problem was Indian Railways transportation of goods or passengers was covered under forward charge but other things they used to face a issue and that's when an amendment happened now transportation of goods or passengers is already covered now government has said that department of post jahan likha hua hai na department of post ke saath government has added one thing called as indian railways ka hai sir ek minute Ministry of Railways, Indian Railways. Now, anything done by Indian Railways will be covered under forward charge. So, this is the only change. This yellow part is the only change. Baki sub as it is. Hai. So, I would recommend ki aap ye page 90. You go to page 90 and there you add this Ministry of Railways, Indian railways so wherever department of post was mentioned everywhere indian railways is added 
so that Indian Railways now pays tax under forward charge. Can someone help me? Why did Indian Railways request this? What was the difficulty? Kuch forward mein, kuch reverse mein, kya farak hai? It was good, na? That some pierces they don't have to pay tax. Why did Indian Railways ask for this? Exactly right. ITC. Correct. If it is taxable under reverse charge, nah, they will have to reverse input tax credit. Do you remember the definition of E? Yes, you know, e, e by F, common credit, we used to do E by F. Now, there E means exempt supply plus supply where recipient is liable to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism. So, if you are a supplier of reverse charge mechanism, then you will not get ITC on your purchase. So Indian Railways was losing some input tax credit and doing all this computation becomes a headache. And hence, they requested government, please bring us under forward charge so that we can peacefully take input tax credit. Obviously, it was accepted because anyways, it's a government department. Okay. Okay, next, page 103. Page 103, there is a deletion. You can see M entry. Now, in this M entry, transportation of goods by a vessel from outside India up to India, this line is deleted. Why is this deleted, sir? Now, people, exemption shall not apply. That means this was taxable. Something which was taxable has been removed from this entry. I'll give you an example. Supplier is in non-taxable territory. Recipient is also in non-taxable territory. The service was transportation of goods in a vessel from outside India to India. See this very carefully. Yeah? Transportation of goods in a vessel from outside India to India. Now when both are in non-taxable territory, supplier is in US, recipient is in US. Government had said that for transportation of goods in a vessel, importer will have to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism. Importer of the goods in India as defined in the GST law has to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism. Now, importer of goods was neither supplier nor recipient. He was neither supplier nor recipient. Because supplier recipient dono bhar hai. See, this is the transporter who is outside India. This is the exporter who is getting the contract done. Transporter, exporter both are outside India. Both are in non-taxable territory. Importer is in India. Importer is not the party to the contract. Importer is just taking that from the exporter. Government had said that importer has to pay tax under RCM. Now, first of all, this has been deleted. Why sir? This has been deleted because of a Supreme Court judgment where it was clearly mentioned by Supreme Court saying that Oh, transportation of goods, the value of transportation of goods is already included in the value of goods because that value of transportation gets included. You remember customs, you used to calculate CIF, cost, insurance, freight. 
वो एफ ओ बी वैल्यू देन यू यूज टू एड फ्रेट देन यू यूज टू एड इंश्योरेंस दैट मीन्स यू यूज टू ऑलरेडी चार्ज कस्टम ड्यूटी ऑन दैट सो सुप्रीम कोर्ट गेव अ जजमेंट ऑफ मोहित मिनरल्स सेइंग दैट इट्स अ कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई एंड हेन्स एज टैक्स इज ऑलरेडी चार्ज एज गुड्स अगेन टैक्सेशन के नॉट अप्लाई ऑन द इम्पोर्टर एंड दैट्स वाई गवर्नमेंट हैज डिलीटेड दिस आरसीएम एंट्री आरसीएम एंट्री भी चले गया सर यस आउटसाइड इंडिया टू इंडिया ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स इन अ वेसल आरसीएम एंट्री इज ऑल्सो डिलीटेड एक्सेप्शन में जो एक्सेप्शन था दैट इज ऑल्सो डिलीटेड सो टू चेंजेस द एक्सेप्शन इन द एक्सेप्शन इज डिलीटेड दैट मीन्स नाउ दैट एक्सेप्शन इज नॉट देयर that means it will be a exempt transaction is it sir yes this will be a exempt transaction if both are outside india then it enjoys an exemption second rcm entry is also deleted rcm entry is specifically written separately what i want you to do on 103 is i want you to delete this aur isme se agar aapko kuch chahiye you can just quickly make a note of it and you can delete it that this is what has happened and great done done okay
ओके नाउ कम टू पेज 105 सैटेलाइट लॉन्च सर्विसेस अर्लियर सैटेलाइट लॉन्च सर्विसेस प्रोवाइडेड बाय इसरो एंड एंट्रिक्स कॉर्पोरेशन एंड न्यू स्पेस इंडिया लिमिटेड यूज टू बी एग्जेम्ड now satellite launch services provided by any person enjoys a exemption privatization plus giving an exemption for satellite so satellite launch service provided by any person will enjoy a exemption what is deleted this is deleted this this part now it has become a plain entry satellite launch services okay people next page page 118 page 118 page 118 reverse charge mechanism and e-commerce operator thoda recall deta hu you remember we had made one small story mr a was a director in a music company he got a residential house on rent he received a call from terrorist company arranged for insurance agent and security services we took help from government and rbi he used to travel in a rented cab sometimes hide in a truck gta one day killed by a recovery agent company filed a case in the arbitral tribunal with the help of advocate nothing happened finally they sponsored an event outside india traveling in a vessel फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वो वेसल का पॉइंट डिलीट हो गया इज इट सर यस यस हो गया एंड देन एट टू प्लेसेस इन आर सी एम वेर गवर्नमेंट इज रिटर्न दे हैव डिलीटेड और दे हैव एक्सक्लूडेड इंडियन रेलवे नाउ इन आर सी एम एक्सक्लूजन that means indian railways any service provided by indian railways will fall under forward charge do you agree with this yes okay so there are two things excluding indian railways there was a entry called as renting of immovable property by government to registered persons this was the entry what is the amendment sir this part is the amendment and then in the normal entry government providing any service to business entity we had written note 2 in our notebook in note 2 rcm is not applicable for first three limbs now first three limbs department of post including indian railways so indian railways is the addition ye add ho gaya this is the amendment ye aap likh lijiye ya and indian railways you mark it and keep plus you can also do one thing you can go to your notebook wherever rcm is there or ye do entry mein you make those changes that means indian railways is now covered by forward charge completely
written great either write it or make the change in the notebook okay hmm in f point you will exclude indian railways and e point na reference diya hua hoga you would have given a reference to note 2 both the points you would have given reference to note 2 but there na specifically you would have written in note 2 however there are two exceptions first one first three limbs first three limbs ke paas na you would have written department of post basically indian railways is now covered by forward charge then uh, any any service provided by government was under rcm now government excluding indian railways okay yeah any any government related point now indian railways is excluded from that people okay then you remember 95 e-commerce operators are responsible to pay tax for notified services provided through e-commerce operators now in this there were four things first one transportation of passengers in a radio taxi maxi cab motor cab motor cycle omnibus omnibus basically bus designed to carry more than 12 passengers or any other motor vehicle any other motor vehicle can also cover a auto auto this was the first entry second entry yeah the accommodation accommodation except where the supplier of service is liable to register then third one was housekeeping services same language except where the supplier of service is liable to register and last one was restaurant service except in a specified premise and specified premise be defined the a you where a unit of accommodation the rent of which exceeds 7500 per day declared tariff these were the four entries correct now people there is a famous company in mumbai i think it goes to ahmedabad also neeta buses private limited you have heard oh neeta buses private limited oh yes now so uh, if it is under 95 
what is the problem to the supplier if something is under 95 what is the problem to the supplier they got three party supplier recipient eco government is saying for all this eco will pay the tax under reverse charge sorry under 95 now when eco is paying the tax under 95 what is the problem to the supplier sir supplier ko kya problem hoga supplier is happy na exactly right supplier would not get input tax credit so what did all these companies say to government they said government we keep purchasing buses buses have 28 percent gst if you put us under 95 we are not getting input tax credit how will we expand our business government said okay don't cry i'll make the change and what they did they excluded a company who is providing transportation of passenger in a omnibus careful careful what about a individual providing bus service through red bus app who is responsible to pay the tax individual providing bus service through red bus app thank you so much e-commerce operator will be liable to pay the tax but what about Nita buses private limited providing services through red bus then in that case supplier that is Nita buses will be liable to pay tax did you understand the change and why it happened yeah very very simple change but very impactful change when it comes to bus industry and most of these are organized players jadatar private limited companies hai. but be careful about one more thing entire reverse charge mechanism na they use the word body corporate body corporate covers two things company and llp but <laughs> here what have they used they have used only a company which is registered under companies act 2013 that means will llp get this forward charge benefit the answer is no they will not be eligible you need to know the small small points here and there that's where institute is going to play they'll give you a llp which is providing bus service and body corporate you'll be like oh body corporate careful careful here only a company is excluded from 95 now when company is excluded from 95 think 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 you remember 91 92 93 94 95 91 forward charge 925 products 93 rcm 94 rcm 95 e-commerce operator now anything which goes out of 95 where will it fall anything which goes out of 95 will fall under 91 you need to be very strong with your basics great okay abhi now abhi ye to bata diya now if government had to make this change what will they do sir they should have just added here ye omnibus likha hua na omnibus ke baju mein likh dena tha other than body corporate correct na here near omnibus they should have just written omnibus other than sorry omnibus other than company except when it is provided by a company but you know what they did they deleted omnibus from this entry one minute huh? they deleted omnibus from this entry and added one more entry for omnibus saying that omnibus except when provided by a company net impact same hai. net impact is same that if a company is providing services relating to transportation of passengers then in that case it would be covered under forward charge and not under 95 but first they deleted omnibus from here and then they added one entry for omnibus and then they wrote except when provided by a company so omnibus deleted from this entry and 
omnibus added in a new entry excluding company what should we do sir you just mention this line on page 118 done okay great hmm input tax credit two small changes uske baad we will deal with circulars some circulars have come but two small changes one block credit you remember block credit motor vehicles designed to carry up to 13 passengers food and beverages outdoor catering personal consumption goods or services any goods or services used for construction of any mobile property except plant and machinery now one entry has been added any goods or services purchased to fulfill csr obligation you understand csr obligation yes csr obligation corporate social responsibility so if a company is purchasing anything to meet corporate social responsibility obligation will they get input tax credit on those goods or services the answer is no so mention this just mention this on page 124 block credit any goods or services purchased for meeting csr obligation will not be eligible this you had written completely in your notebook done okay and even that rcm na outside india to india vessel that's also there in the main part as well so as we move forward we will come across that as well okay people there is one more change which is there in your pdf file of amendments but i will just discuss it now and then we will read it later you remember e e e by f let me bring it to your knowledge again 
E means exempt supply plus supply where recipient is liable to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism. E used to exclude something. E excludes interest other than interest earned by banks and financial institutions. Negative list other than land and building. And there was one entry related to duty credit scripts. These three things were excluded. Now what has happened? Government has added one more thing which is excluded from the exclusion. Ha ha ha. Ek second ha. Aisa kuch yaad aega. That you have seen this. Ek second sir. E means exempt supply plus supply where recipient is liable to pay tax under RC. And it used to say excludes. Interest on loans, deposits, advances other than interest earned by banks, nothing has changed. Duty credit script, duty credit script is exempt goods that will be excluded. And lastly, negative list other than people excludes other than that means. Now whatever we are reading now, it will form part of E. Land and building, this is the amendment. This green color portion is the amendment. Now let me explain you what this is. People, have you heard about a duty free shop? So nice sir. Duty free shop is at the international airport. Now international airport will have two duty free shops. One is at the departure area and one is at the arrival area. You logically tell me people, if you purchase something from the departure area and go outside India, should it qualify as export? Uh, sir. Uh departure area se purchase kiya I am going outside India yes it should qualify as export goods are going outside India should there be GST on these no GST should not be there okay now coming to arrival area again duty free shop here both are known as duty free shops at the arrival area duty free shop and then you walk into India should GST be levied? Sir, consumption is happening in India. GST technically should be levied. Now, Supreme Court gave a decision, a Flamingo case, where Supreme Court said, both duty-free shops, both at departure area and arrival area, are outside the custom border because that is outside to that's a bonded warehouse it's like a warehouse so there cannot be any kind of tax on this particular sale which is done by the arrival area or departure area this is a bonded warehouse and warehoused goods being sold is covered by negative list you remember negative list people a goods related though transaction tha non-taxable territory to non-taxable territory and second one was sale of warehouse goods or high sea sales you remember this now supreme court concluded whether it is departure area or arrival area tax will not be applicable for anything which is sold by duty free shop so duty free shop selling any product through departure area or arrival area will not suffer any GST but government was like I cannot collect output now let me deny ITC hey careful 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 I cannot collect output because Supreme Court has said that whether in arrival area or departure area I will not be liable to pay tax now arrival area mein jo duty free shop hai. that duty free shop whenever it is selling whether there will be any GST I need your answer when they are selling whether there will be any GST no it will not have any GST 
output fine government is not getting gst is it export no it is not export because you are getting it into india government said though it is there in negative list let this form part of e now what happens if it forms part of e if it forms part of e it will be as good as a exam supply will you get itc in relation to this particular supply the answer is no you will not get itc for this particular supply if you are not getting itc the tax paid on purchase becomes a cost that's what government wanted government has its own way supreme court said on output na government denied itc on purchase how did they deny itc very smartly yeah they included this transaction in e abhi see this carefully while reading it e excludes other than one second one second e excludes other than e excludes other than will it become e e excludes other than yes it is included a hey, sure sure yes it is included now let's read what is included supply of goods by duty free shop in international airport at arrival terminal to incoming passengers read it again read it again supply of goods by duty free shop in a international airport at arrival terminal to incoming passengers now this is given in your pdf don't write it now when we read that na i will again make you recall this these two points na i want you to recall again and that's why i have kept it separately in the amendment pdf going forward as well clear okay okay people departure area will we get itc what do you think don't worry about itc government will come home and give refund as well is it sir yeah yeah you are doing a export transaction you'll get a refund also oh yes yes government only had a problem with arrival area government was like goods are coming into india how can you break consumption principle like this okay i can't collect output tax let me not give itc and what will be the impact of not giving itc technically government is collecting tax okay nothing to write from this we will discuss this when we read the itc related amendments further okay the, just wanted to show you from the beginning so that you are able to understand this okay come to next page page 159 page 159 one very small change e invoicing limit 10 crore reduced to 5 crore 10 crore reduced to 5 crore that means if a person's turnover exceeds 5 crore in any preceding financial year starting from 17 18 then in that case he will have to generate e invoice ha huh, in e the transportation of goods in a vessel point that is anyways a taxable supply that is now deleted but that change did not affect anything okay 
ओके पेज टू थर्टी फोर नेक्स्ट पेज पेज टू थर्टी फोर यू रिमेंबर ऑफेंसेस कुछ याद है पनिशमेंट गुड्स विदाउट इनवॉइस इनवॉइस विदाउट गुड्स कलेक्शन अमाउंट डज नॉट पे टू गवर्नमेंट फॉर थ्री मंथ्स टेक्स फ्रॉड्यूलेंट आईटीसी ऑन द इनवॉइस दैट इज फेक इनवॉइस गवर्नमेंट has deleted some offenses sir ye to criminals ko encouragement hai now people government has reduced the repercussions three things have been deleted g j and k these three points are now deleted my favorite offense is deleted obstructing an officer no jail sir no jail now G, J, and K. Tampering with any documents. No jail. Can penalty still apply? People, careful. Don't make a mistake on this. Can penalty still apply? Yes. No change in penalty. Yeah, only offenses. That means there will be no prosecution. Penalty can still apply for all these crimes, and then fails to supply information. government felt that these are uh, smaller crimes we should not make the person suffer imprisonment because of this let there be penalty we'll recover penalty but it's not good to put him behind bar for this okay okay come to the next page page 235 people you remember these slabs 1 crore to 2 crore 1 year jail 2 crore to 5 crore 5 minus 2 3 years jail more than 5 crore 5 minus 0 5 crore jail you remember so, but this yes now this exceeding 1 crore to 2 crore this will apply only for clause b what is clause b sir can you see and tell me whether clause b is invoice without goods or goods without invoice or else without seeing can you tell me which is a bigger crime invoice without goods or services or goods without invoice first one second one one two uh, invoice without goods goods without invoice invoice without goods so 1 crore to 2 crore will apply only for one crime and that is issuing invoice without supply of goods or services the basically fake invoicing fake invoicing even today 1 crore to 2 crore will apply for all other crimes 1 crore to 2 crore will not be applicable so have they reduced the number of prosecution cases the answer is yes they have reduced the number of prosecution cases because 1 crore to 2 crore will now apply only for clause b and not for any other tax evasion so this is the only amendment on this page and then page 236 page 236 compounding and more than 2 crore for all the crimes same 2 crore to 5 crore 3 years more than 5 crore 5 years You remember compounding people, compounding, compounding. Instead of going to jail, a person can pay an amount. Obviously, before he is convicted, he can pay an amount, and he will not go to jail. Now, some provisions are changed in this. First change is they have mentioned all the offences. if it is not compounded earlier then a person who is accused of clause b will never get compounding careful careful very important provision people i expect a question on this part clause b fake invoicing can a person apply for compounding clause b can a person apply for compounding the answer is no not even a single time clause a 
कैन ही अप्लाई फॉर कॉम्पाउंडिंग वंस यस क्लॉज ए ही कैन अप्लाई फॉर कॉम्पाउंडिंग वंस सी यस डी यस ई यस एफ यस एच यस आई यस एल यस बाकी सब क्लॉजेस के लिए यू कैन अप्लाई कॉम्पाउंडिंग फर्स्ट टाइम I can apply compounding first time, but for clause B it can't be done. Now you will delete this adding abating, sir. Does it mean adding and abating is now not compoundable? Adding and abating is added here. L. ये जो L है ना, this L is this point. And then there was one relating to value. This has been deleted, and here. now it's clause b only everything else is deleted and then g j and k compounding deleted because g j k are not a crime at all now any other class of person remains same make these changes people either you can do on page 236 or you can do it in your pdf do these changes neatly Now adding and abating is added here. This L is adding and abating. So for all the crimes, first time criminal, can he apply for compounding? Yes. For clause B, no. डोंट यू थिंक यही लिख सकते थे वो लोग ए टू एफ एक्सक्लूडिंग बी दे कुड हैव डन दिस ना गवर्नमेंट्स बैड हैबिट आई मीन आई एम नो वन टू टेल गवर्नमेंट बट एनी वेस यू अंडरस्टूड यू अंडरस्टूड दी पॉइंट ना दे कुड हैव रिटर्न देर ना ए टू एफ एक्सक्लूडिंग बी नहीं दे रोट ए टू एफ देन दे रोट वन मोर पॉइंट क्लास बी नो कंपाउंडिंग okay next same page minimum and maximum amounts limits for compounding have been changed earlier there used to be this 10000 i used to always make fun of this minimum amount for jail is 1 crore you are comparing it with 10000 if you recall government has now deleted it now there is no 10000 higher of 50% or 10000 and 50 has been reduced to 25 150 has been reduced to 100 so both minimum as well as maximum both have been reduced make this change ये तो अच्छा कर दिया सर अच्छा नहीं हाउ मच विल अ पर्सन पे पीपल ही हैज पेड टैक्स ही हैज पेड इंटरेस्ट ही हैज पेड पेनल्टी इफ द गुड्स वर कन्फिस्केटेड रिडेम्शन फाइन प्लस कॉम्पाउंडिंग 
bankrupt but sir obviously a criminal should go bankrupt correct i agree dan dan return okay great चलिए हा अब राइटिंग विल रिड्यूस्ड बिकॉज नाउ ऑल दीज अमेंडमेंट आर इनकॉर्पोरेटेड चैप्टर वाइज एंड ऑल दीज अमेंडमेंट आर मेन्शन पॉइंट वाइज वेर एवर आई कुड मेक दी चेंजेस देन एंड देर इट सेल्फ इन दस्ट बुक आई हैव इंक्लूडेड दो पेजेस सेपरेटली नाउ लेट्स गो थ्रू द बैलेंस अमेंडमेंट which contains various circulars three important things circulars out of all this then online gaming industry ethics uh, is a new chapter but whether a question will come that we don't know because it just contains some uh, common practices which should be done by a chartered accountant and trust me you have learned more ethics in audit compared to this plus in your officers last 3 years you have been learning only ethics don't you agree with this people correct na has 3 saal se to wahi seekh rahe sir kali ki ethical kaise banna hai bas correct exactly agreed people yes okay come forward <laughs> chaliye supply first of all introduction chapter is removed but uh, introduction chapter from textbook a uh, new module has removed it which covered various constitutional provisions gst network gst suvidha providers all other topics related to supply input tax credit charge are intact changes related to online gaming that will cover separately introduction Article 246, 246A, 269A, 279A, GST Council, GST Suvidha Provider, GST Network, all these are deleted. But what about order of utilizing ITC? That obviously that is there. Though it was part of Chapter One as well as payment as well as ITC, it's already there. What about registration limits? Obviously there. What about charge nine one to nine five? Hey, people don't start excluding everything from introduction chapter only the first two pages are first one or two pages which had only base stuff which we only touched upon in some time only that is excluded clear with this okay now now is all your task abhi i have to check whether i have explained you everything correctly during the classes i will ask you some questions you have to clarify as if you are cbic let's see let's see people there is a holding company dhyan se sunna there is a holding company holding company is holding shares of the subsidiary company sir obviously na the moment we call it as holding subsidiary that means holding company is holding shares for the of the subsidiary company now is there a supply by holding company to subsidiary company merely by holding shares holding company holding shares of a subsidiary company is it a supply that you are holding shares of subsidiary company cbic clarified as all of you have correctly pointed out out it's not a it's not securities as sorry it's not a supply of goods or service because it is merely securities you remember securities are neither goods nor services as securities are neither goods nor services gst would not be applicable just by merely holding shares of a subsidiary company par sir ye problem aaya hai kyun what was the reason behind that you know sac and hsn hsn is harmonized system of nomenclature 
and SAC is service accounting codes. Now in that HSM SAC there was one entry called as service by holding company of holding shares of the subsidiary company. Just because it is there in SAC code does that mean it is a supply? Hey, having a entry in HSN or SAC just says that if it is a supply then this will be the GST rate. I'll give you an example. Say suppose this is there in HSN G digital pen rate likha hua hai 18% I give it to you free of cost whether GST will apply? Nay because this is not covered by four transactions you remember four transactions are covered without consideration that though we don't remember sir yaad dilata ho permanent transfer of a business asset where ITC was taken if I have taken ITC on this then liable second related person distinct person mm -hmm. third principal and agent fourth import of service so if I give this free to you obviously I will not take ITC because I am giving you free then in that case whether GST can apply on this the answer is no but it was mentioned 12% or 18% in HSN na? sir first it has to become a supply then we will check the rate do you agree that checking rate is subsequent to determining whether it is a supply liable to GST yes clear with this chalo let's have a look at the circular clarification for taxability of shares held in a subsidiary company by holding company securities are neither neither goods nor services as per 252 and 2102 of CGST act one defines goods one defines service Further, securities include shares as defined under Securities Contract Act 1956. This implies that securities held by a holding company in a subsidiary company are neither goods nor service. Therefore, purchase or sale of securities is neither supply of goods nor supply of service. Now this part you will read yourself. page 2 this is part of the same PDF So you need to be very careful. Huh? What type of question can come on this sir? Case study based. Where they will give you these facts and ask you whether the contention of the commissioner is correct. Whether the contention of the auditor is correct. Whether the contention of the accountant is correct. They can frame it in any way that holding company is holding shares of the subsidiary company whether GST will apply merely by holding or dusra type ka question they say they will give you a supply by holding company to subsidiary company being supply of a service then in that case whether GST will apply yes a if it is a supply of service which is something different not by just because of holding supply of service say suppose holding company is giving consultancy service to subsidiary company whether GST will apply the answer is yes they might try to confuse you on these two things okay then uh, movie 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 theater have you ever booked popcorn or popcorn also along with the ticket uh, 
नहीं सर हाँ ठीक है ओके नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज वेन यू आर बुकिंग द मूवी टिकट एंड यू बुक द पॉपकॉर्न एज वेल मूवी टिकट हैज एटीन परसेंट जी एस टी रेस्टोरेंट सर्विस और एनी फूड जॉइंट हैज फाइव परसेंट जी एस टी नाउ वेन यू आर बुकिंग मूवी टिकट अलॉन्ग विथ पॉपकॉर्न द क्वेश्चन वॉज वेदर इट्स अ कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई और इंडिविजुअल सप्लाईज और मिक्स सप्लाई ओके यू माइट हैव योर व्यू बट सीबीआईसी हैज गिवन इट्स व्यू सीबीआईसी हैज सेड दैट मूवी टिकेट अलॉन्ग विथ फूड एंड बेवरेजेस विच इज बींग सप्लाइड इन कंजंक्शन विल बी रिगार्डेड एज अ कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई द रेट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल सप्लाई विल बी एप्लीकेबल एंड द प्रिंसिपल सप्लाई विल बी मूवी टिकेट इज इट सर यस इट विल बी मूवी टिकेट बिकॉज यू रिमेंबर मिक्स सप्लाई में एक कंडीशन है सिंगल प्राइस बट दैट सिंगल प्राइस कंडीशन इज नॉट देर इन कॉम्पोजिट सप्लाई so even though movie ticket and food and beverages are being clubbed together and provided with separate values cbic has said that movie theater ticket rate will be applicable case 2 you buy movie ticket during interval you come out and purchase popcorn sir obviously individual separate supply because that is to be taxed as restaurant or food joint services liable at 5% hey, are you clear with this yes okay let's have a look in fact this uh, movie theater and popcorn nice similar to hotel accommodation and breakfast aise thode breakfast khane chale gaye kabhi Oh, accordingly book the room also same way just went to eat popcorn and with that see a movie it let's have a look let's have a look as to what cbic has said clarification on taxability of supply of food or beverages in cinema halls restaurant service means supply by way of or as part of any service of goods being food or any other article for human consumption or any drink provided by restaurant eating joint including mess canteen whether for consumption on or away from the premise where food or any other article for human consumption is supplied sir we have never read this definition because this comes from rate notification technically this is not there in your syllabus but as it contains the principle of composite supply and individual supplies na that's why institute has included this in your syllabus technically the rate of gst can never be asked rate of gst will always be given to you in the question chaliye Cinema operators may run these refreshments or eating stalls or kiosks or counters or restaurants themselves or they may give it on contract to third party. It is clarified that supply of food or beverages in a cinema hall shall be taxable as restaurant service as long as food and beverages are part of the service and supplied independent of cinema exhibition service so if it is supplied separately then it is restaurant services it is further clarified that where sale of cinema ticket and supply of food and beverages are clubbed together and such bundled supply satisfies the test of composite supply the entire supply will attract GST at the rate applicable for exhibition of cinema that is principal supply so principal supply will be cinema theater sir what if on my website i write that 
these are optional you can buy it and you can pay separately this will not be included as a package what if i write all these things on the website and provide it separately then you might take a position that it's a completely different supply how do we identify in the exam in the exam they will always give you this part if you find these two words then you'll be able to identify it easily and give your answer sir what if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned then go by your first assumption and then write a note as well that if it is assumed otherwise it might also be regarded as individual supplies clear with this yes how will this come in the exam sir they'll give you a supplier who is supplying exhibition of cinematographic film matlab movie theater ka kaam kar raha hai collection from movie tickets they'll give you a figure then they will give you food and beverages collection at the counters then they will give you movie tickets booked or clubbed along with the package of food and beverages this will be the amount so they might give you three things to compute the output they might give you some purchases you'll compute itc and you'll arrive at your final answer of output minus itc samajh mein aaya okay great yeah for individual supplies separate gst rate will apply but don't worry ha huh? uh, rate of gst na you don't uh, even if you know na if a question is giving a rate to you please don't change that say suppose you know that restaurant is liable to 5% but if in the question 12 is given which rate will you adopt 12 so it is always better not to know a rate of a particular product because if you remember that in the examination na then it becomes a issue theek <laughs> hai okay coming to time of supply and place of supply related amendments time of supply people the new icai module does not contain time of supply for joint development agreement you remember in time of supply chapter we did joint development agreement supplier recipient land owner builder the time of supply will be first occupation not later than first occupation or completion certificate whichever is earlier only the time of supply portion is not there exemption and rcm entries are they even today there the answer is yes just give me 2 minutes i'll take you through this land owner builder land owner is providing development rights builder is providing construction service now say suppose land owner gets 48 flats out of 100 flats being constructed and builder is getting 52 flats and he is going to provide construction service so land owner is giving development rights builder is giving construction service what if they sell 26 flats under construction whether gst will apply ah uh, sir under construction flats obviously yes gst will be applicable okay 22 flats were sold after being constructed whether gst will apply no 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 gst because it is covered by negative list you remember this you learnt in childhood bachpan mein sikha tha kabhi correct okay now builder builder is selling 32 flats while under construction whether gst would be applicable yes gst would be applicable 20 flats which are sold after being constructed no gst now for these two things 
government had said time of supply that time of supply is not there in your syllabus you understood time of supply is not there for your syllabus is this this portion there in your syllabus yes this portion there in your syllabus yes this is there in your syllabus yes this is there in your syllabus yes then development rights ka taxability dekhte hain development rights to the extent careful ah to the extent builder is selling under construction property builder sells under construction property people think 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 to the extent builder is selling under construction property development rights to the extent builder is selling under construction property is builder collecting gst from the home buyers yes builder is collecting gst from the home buyers that's why this enjoys an exemption you remember you remember this this exemption entry is still there ah huh? there is no change in the exemption entry to the extent flats are unsold at the time of completion unsold flats at the time of completion uh, unsold flat at the time of completion so to the extent of unsold flats have we paid gst here no we have not paid gst here so this is taxable under reverse charge mechanism careful this exemption and rcm entry is still there in syllabus what is removed is time of supply for jda agreements but do you agree that to understand the exemption and rcm you need to know jda so technically if you don't know jda then understanding exemption and rcm becomes difficult so what is removed is only one thing development rights construction services relating to jda is not there in your syllabus when it was added na it was there in statutory update but thereafter na module had has never had it even the new module does not have it so jda ignore the time of supply portion okay okay changes in the definition of non taxable online recipient 13 9 12 8 covered in the textbook directly have we have we covered that non taxable online recipient 13 9 13 9 kya sir 13 9 transportation of goods and 12 8 transportation of goods place of supply both the topics have been removed from the law okay now again people i need your help tell me one thing i am from bangalore congratulations sir i come to ahmedabad i am from bangalore i come to ahmedabad i go to a store and purchase a product there web camera what will the seller in ahmedabad charge me C plus S or IGST. <laughs> I am from Bangalore. I go to Ahmedabad. I say, "Gumte firte." I find a shop. Chalo, my webcam khareed lete. So I buy a webcam. What will the storekeeper charge me? C plus S or I? Sir, uh, how will the storekeeper know whether you are taking it to Bangalore or no? Or if you inform, then mm, mm. now let me tell you what were the provisions. Ten one a section ten of place of supply deals with place of supply for goods other than import or export. Ten one a deals with supply involves movement. Now, when the supply involves movement, the place of supply will be where the movement terminates. for delivery to the recipient terminates for delivery to the recipient and it does not matter who is moving the goods koi fark nahi padta hai whether the supplier is moving the goods whether recipient is moving the goods or transporter is moving the goods it does not matter if the supply involves movement where the movement terminates 
if i am a registered person tell me one thing will i inform the ahmedabad seller that i am from bangalore if i am a registered person i will obviously inform sir so that he charges me igst and i am able to take igst credit in karnataka because c plus s of gujarat i will not get itc correct 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 okay correct now the problem was when these supplies are made to unregistered person because if it is made to unregistered person most of the time unregistered person will not inform where he is from so shopkeeper kya use karte the they used to use this also sometimes supply does not involve movement because he has just purchased it and he is taking it from me the place of supply will be location of the goods at the time of delivery and the goods were located in ahmedabad goods were located in gujarat c plus s was being charged now some states argued on this saying that say suppose a bangalore person is going to gujarat and buying something he will also bring it to karnataka again na so tax should come to karnataka why should it stay in gujarat government has introduced a new point in section 10 which is called as 101 ca careful 101 ca says if the supply is to unregistered person then notwithstanding a and c that means that means do you agree 101 ca will override 101 a and c yes because 101 ca is saying notwithstanding anything contained in 101 a and 101 c the place of supply will be address if address is given so there can be two cases recipient's address is available if recipient's address is available then place of supply will be such address sir if recipient does not give address if recipient does not give address then place of supply will be location of the supplier place of supply will be location of the supplier now tell me one thing if i want to get tax in karnataka so that karnataka government earns should i give my state name wherever i go the answer is yes if the tax has to come to karnataka in all these cases only for goods are don't start applying this for services only for goods we are reading 10 1 section 10 goods if i go anywhere say suppose i go to mumbai and i purchase something even if i am unregistered if i want to contribute to karnataka what should i do i should mention that i am from karnataka if i mention i am from karnataka what will the person charge me as tax c plus s or igst he will charge me igst what if i don't tell him what if i don't tell him then in that case the place of supply will be location of supplier he will end up charging c plus s personally i expect a question on this because the amendment is given but the logic of the amendment is very strong why has the amendment dealt with only unregistered person reason be registered person will himself inform where he is so that he can get itc samajh me aaya you understood this point why is the amendment dealing only with supply to unregistered person because registered person will anyways give his address so no problem at all the problem comes in case of unregistered person supplies and hence government has said if supply is made to unregistered person two things address available no address 
if address is available place of supply will be such address if address is not available location of the supplier so all the mumbai students if you want to contribute to maharashtra government next time when you go to ahmedabad will you mention the state yes so that the tax flows to maharashtra and what will ahmedabad students do whenever they go to rajasthan they will always mention gujarat so that igst is charged hey, are you clear with the amendment okay this type of question can be asked in your examination they will give you a case like this that a person went to maharashtra he purchased some goods what would be the place of supply maybe you will have to write both the things whether address given or not or they will give you whether address was given and then you have to determine the type of supply or they might give you in the first question जहां सब कुछ रहता है ना वहां फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन में दे विल गिव यू वन ट्रांजैक्शन सप्लाई टू अनरजिस्टर्ड पर्सन एड्रेस वाज नॉट अवेलेबल यू हैव टू डिटरमाइन द टाइप ऑफ टैक्स व्हाट विल द टाइप ऑफ टैक्स बी सी प्लस एस क्लियर ओके ओके ग्रेट चलो गो एड हैव अ लुक एट टेन वन सी योर ये आप खुद पढ़िए रीड दिस and tell me whether you have understood more than the place of supply understanding the impact is important because what will be asked in the exam is not place of supply they'll ask you the impact what type of tax so remember every place of supply which will at the end of it result into type of tax which has to be charged and should we remember the wordings of this you should people this i expect in exam 101 ca you need to be very strong with the wordings done done red red you read not withstanding 101a 101c the place of supply will be determined based on address and no address if address is given then such address no address location of the supplier in fact ye aapko easy lag raha hoga na because uh, services mein you have seen something like this address no address for banking 12 you have seen similar provision correct okay okay now interesting circular uh this was a issue i remember in classes i have discussed it every time i discuss it i hope you also remember something now 
uh, there was something called as performance based service you remember performance based service where the goods are made available by the recipient to the supplier and the supplier works upon it jaise uh, washing laundry of clothes where the product comes to the supplier and supplier works upon it ya repair of a motor vehicle etc the question was courier 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 will it be a performance based service will courier fall under 133 or 132 132 generally and 133 was performance based service कुछ ऐसा सुना हुआ लग रहा है ओके नाउ सीबीआईसी हैज इशूड अ सर्क्यूलर ऑन दिस एंड दे आर सेइंग दैट कुरियर्स और एनी ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स विल ऑलवेज फॉल अंडर थर्टीन टू जनरली एंड नॉट अंडर परफॉर्मेंस बेस्ड सर्विस दैट मींस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ गुड्स will only fall under 132 or 122 that is general provisions you don't have to check where it is performed in fact i was waiting if government would have said performance then the question would have been where is it performed where is it performed jahan goods hand over kiya or where it was delivered <laughs> because in transportation goods will move from one place to another na it becomes very difficult to check where is it performed and hence cbic has played very well they have written it will not be a case of 133 it will just be a case of 132 samajh mein aaya okay great let's have a look let's have a look at this circular in fact This came on 2710 people. You know May 24 cut off date is 31st October. Okay, place of supply. In case of supply of service by transportation of goods including mail or just mention courier here. Mail or courier. Issue whether place of supply of services for transportation of goods will be based on 132 or 133 clarification section 139 which provides that place of supply in case of transportation of goods other than mail or courier in cases where location of supplier of service or recipient is outside india shall be destination of goods has been omitted do you agree that 139 is omitted yes 139 is omitted Now the question is where will it fall? Thirteen nine तो निकल गया. Will it fall under thirteen two or thirteen three? So CBIC gave a clarification. Consequently, after the amendment comes into force, place of supply in such cases shall be determined by default rule, that is thirteen two. Accordingly, in cases where location of recipient is available, place of supply of such service shall be location of recipient. in case location of recipient is not available in the ordinary course of business then place of supply will be location of supplier further place of supply in case of service of transportation of goods by mail or courier will continue to be determined under 132 cbic is like wo to 132 mein aata hai na There was a lot of confusion in the industry on this, but now there's a lot of clarity. Okay, great. People, now I need your help. In fact, you have to help JK Shah classes. People, JK Shah in Mumbai. wants to start a new branch in goa is it sir yes new branch in goa abhi goa mein na this is the land and this is a holding you understand holding 
so they have placed advertisement there my question to you is do case deta hu ek land and holding taken on rent so jkesh classes has taken land and holding on rent and fir they are making the structure themselves i mean wo kya lagwana hai wo sab designing wagaira everything is done by jkesh classes they have taken the land and holding on rent this is case 1 case 2 is where they are merely taking advertising service from a service provider they are doing advertisement they are merely taking advertisement service i don't want to manage that entire holding you manage the holding just paste this format and this size and this advertisement there i can't manage it i am only giving a contract to a third party vendor who is going to manage the entire holding for me this is the second type of contract dono ho sakta hai sir dono ho sakta hai now let me give you some background 12 2 people do you agree 12 will apply because supplier and recipient both are in india and when supplier and recipient both are in india you don't use section 13 for place of supply you use 12 of igst correct theek hai now 12 2 there are two parts rp urp if it is provided to rp location of rp if it is provided to urp location of recipient otherwise location of supplier fir ek tha 12 3 which is related to immovable property boat vessel the place of supply will be location of the immovable property my question to you is the first case will be 12 3 or 12 2 all yours i have taken land and holding on rent and land and holding is in goa hmm okay so your answer is 12 3 thank you for your answer 12 3 now can you tell me what will be the place of supply if you say 12 3 sir 12 3 holding is in goa place of supply will be goa okay where is the supplier sir supplier is also in goa thank you so much place of supply goa supplier goa what will be the type of gst c plus s will jksc mumbai get itc of c plus s of goa no they will not get itc of c plus s of goa because that c plus s will get buried in goa do you agree with this okay ab dekhte hai advertising service सर एडवर्टाइजिंग सर्विस नहीं सर ट्वेल्व टू ये इमोबल प्रॉपर्टी नहीं होगा ट्वेल्व टू प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई विल बी लोकेशन ऑफ द रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन दैट इज मुंबई वेर इज द सप्लायर सप्लायर कुड बी एनी वेयर बट विल टेक इट एज गोवा वॉट विल ही चार्ज आई जी एस टी विल जे के सी मुंबई गेट आई टी सी इन द सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट the answer is yes as a chartered accountant what will you suggest jksc mumbai to manage the property themselves or to give it to third party vendor first one second one second one hey, are you clear with this yes so if you take the property on rent if you take this entire property on rent then in that case you will be governed by 12 3 12 the place of supply is location of immovable property kuch yaad aaya i would have given you a example for a uh, hotel accommodation ca booking a hotel accommodation in goa c plus s will be charged by that goa you will not get itc you remember something which you would have done in childhood immovable property there is no rp urp in this so immovable property the place of supply will be location of immovable property
clear 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 okay now what is given in the circular circular has given only till here but you also need to think what type of questions can come question will want you to determine this yellow color is what is given in the circular blue color is what you need to find in the exam samajh me aaya okay so just be careful about this this can also form part of your main first question where they can give you that a holding was taken on rent we were managing everything that holding was to set up a new branch in ayodhya whether itc will be available to a mumbai based company okay let's have a look at the circular now circular is very easy it's just that you need to know 12 to 12 3 how is it working okay let's see place of supply in respect of advertising sector so they have provided two cases can you tell me just by reading this whether i am taking the property on rent or whether it is advertising services property on rent exactly right correct now before reading the clarification na you just circle 12 3 so when you are reading one day before the exam na you will be able to manage it very easily kya yeah, property on rent liya to 12 3 so what would be the place of supply place of supply will be location where such holding or structure is located this is dangerous huh? if you don't have a place of business in that particular state should you go for option 1 it will increase your cost cost bahut zyada ho jayega okay second one place of supply where vendor himself owns the structure i am owning the structure or i take it on rent and is responsible for display of advertisement of the advertising company at this location see i am responsible for display when i am responsible for display na i am actually providing advertisement service and it will be governed by 12 2 and not by 12 3 nahi agar khali place of supply pucha hai to you will just determine place of supply obviously people we will never go beyond the uh, question but what i think is institute can also test you on the uh, computation part output minus itc so you need to be very strong with the type of tax okay okay done 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 so just be careful whether you are taking on rent or whether you are taking advertisement service makes a lot of difference to the taxation i mean the tax rate will remain same but it impacts your itc and overall cost okay ah uh, c part is not there in your statutory update 
it is part of the same circular but i am not sure why institute has not kept it so november 24 students you just place a cross mark may 24 you can delete it completely uh, may 24 mein to apply nahi hoga november 24 i don't i am not sure maybe institute later adds this because it's part of the circular but they have not included so c part for may 24 not applicable okay now coming to some easy ones valuation composition exemption rcm eco rcm eco we have already discussed exemption b ek entry chhod ke we have discussed naya entry aaya hai that we have to discuss composition we have already discussed valuation ka one important point has been added okay people i have a personal question first will you give a guarantee for a loan which i want never sir never never yes oh yes see okay theek hai some are ready to give some are ready to give with fee wonderful now 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 the question is when a director is giving a guarantee director giving a guarantee for a loan which is taken by a company that's normally called as personal guarantee so director gives a personal guarantee for a loan taken by company now normally director will not charge the company why sir rbi rbi has said director should not get even a single rupee for this guarantee otherwise it is as good as taking out the profits of the company by director people do you agree with this people rbi has said you can never charge for this guarantee which you are giving this personal guarantee which you are giving you can never charge the company now the question is whether gst can be charged on something where rbi says you cannot charge so there cannot be a consideration legally there cannot be consideration illegally to you can do anything but legally there cannot be consideration if legally there cannot be consideration can gst apply on this particular transaction because it's a related party transaction people related person covers one controlling another two controlling one one controlling two control is very very wide financial or managerial control and the director who is giving personal guarantee he will obviously have control over the company so it becomes a related party transaction covered by schedule one supply without consideration my question to you is whether gst will apply when rbi is saying consideration cannot be charged whether gst can apply when rbi is saying consideration cannot be charged okay thank you for your answers cbic bhi aapke favor mein cbic has also said no gst can be charged on this because rbi has said that there cannot be any consideration for this transaction but say suppose illegally or in some special cases jahan director jane wala tha he is going to change the company he has sold it to next persons but the next persons don't have guarantee to abhi wo personal guarantee withdraw nahi kiya hai in such cases where consideration is charged whether gst will apply whether legally or illegally if consideration is charged whether gst will apply cbic has said if consideration is charged then in that case forget legal illegal i need my taxes there is no other alternative in this case if consideration is charged aapka bhi answer ekdam correct hai all the answers which i received was perfect now coming to the second part can a holding company give a guarantee for a loan taken by subsidiary company or vice versa 
ऑब्वियसली सर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कॉर्पोरेट गैरेंटी डिफरेंस समझना पर्सनल गैरेंटी इज वेयर डायरेक्टर इज गिविंग अ गैरेंटी कॉर्पोरेट गैरेंटी इज वेयर अ कंपनी इज गिविंग अ गैरेंटी टू द बैंक ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द अदर कंपनी कॉर्पोरेट गैरेंटी आरबीआई परमिट्स कंसिडरेशन इज इट सर या या कॉर्पोरेट गैरेंटी में कोई रेगुलेशन नहीं है अ कंपनी इज अ सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी एज इट इज अ सेपरेट लीगल एंटिटी इट कैन चार्ज कंसिडरेशन बट डू यू थिंक नॉर्मली दे चार्ज इच अदर नहीं सर नॉर्मली तो दे विल नॉट चार्ज इच अदर सो दिस विल बी विदाउट कंसिडरेशन ना इवन दो दिस इज विदाउट कंसिडरेशन सीबीआईसी एस सेड इट इज कवर्ड बाय शेड्यूल वन जीएसटी एप्लीकेबल इट इज कवर्ड बाय शेड्यूल वन जीएसटी इज एप्लीकेबल बट सर व्हाट विल बी द वैल्यू ना वैल्यू will be as per rule 28 of valuation rules which determines the value for related party transactions rule 28 says first open market value second like kind and quality third cost plus 10% fourth reasonable means kuch yaad aa raha hai and do you also remember if recipient can take full itc on that transaction then invoice value is deemed to be open market value if recipient can take full itc then invoice value is deemed to be open market value do you remember such open market value like kind and quality cost plus 10% reasonable means if recipient can take full itc then invoice value is deemed to be open market value now what company started doing company said theek hai gst will apply but we will raise a invoice at zero if we raise an invoice at zero <laughs> and recipient is eligible for full itc will zero be accepted <laughs> The answer is yes. Zero will be accepted. Are obviously na zero will be accepted because if recipient can take full ITC, invoice value is deemed to be open market value. Now government ne ka nee nee. I need taxes here. ऐसे नहीं चलेगा. They created a exception for this. Careful, careful, careful people. They created an exception for this. and they said corporate guarantee will be valued at 1% of guarantee or consideration charged whichever is higher 1% of guarantee amount or consideration charge whichever is higher can you tell me अगर 100 करोर का गारंटी है लोन लोन इज 100 करोर व्हाट विल बी द वैल्यू एंड व्हाट विल बी द जीएसटी एट 18 परसेंट हंड्रेड करोर लोन आई एम गारंटिंग द फुल 100 करोर लोन एज अ कंपनी व्हाट विल बी द वैल्यू व्हाट विल बी द जीएसटी एट 18 परसेंट thank you so much the value will be 1 crore and the gst will be 1 crore at 18% that is 18000 so irrespective of whether you can take full itc or not should you now discharge gst on corporate guarantees the answer is yes you need to discharge gst on corporate guarantees abhi let me sum up Let me sum it up. ध्यान से सुनना Next two minutes are important. Personal guarantee, no consideration can be charged, no GST. If consideration is charged, then GST will apply on that consideration. Corporate guarantee, GST will be charged. 
what will be the value? One percent of guarantee or consideration charged, whichever is higher. What if the other person can take full ITC, sir? Doesn't matter. Still, it will be one percent of guarantee or consideration, whichever is higher. Clear with this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, this entire thing which I told you, na, this entire thing is there in the textbook. Let me make you read that. Then, baki baad me kuch lage to, I'll just show you this. Nay, one percent or consideration, whichever is higher. These are the two things which you will compare. See the language. Let's see. Valuation rules. Rule 28 amendment to provide valuation for corporate guarantee. Circle the term corporate guarantee. Circle corporate guarantee. Page number, how do you guys miss? Well, five chal raha tha, uske baad six hi aega na. <laughs> guys, good morning. <laughs> okay, let's see. The valuation provided for corporate guarantee will apply even if recipient is eligible for full ITC. It means that the provision override any other interpretation of valuation for corporate guarantee 28.2 reads as follows notwithstanding anything contained in one you will ignore open market you will ignore everything the value of supply of service by a supplier to a recipient who is related person by way of providing corporate guarantee careful they are not talking about personal guarantee. Personal guarantee is a supply without consideration. But usme consideration RBI ke se, we cannot charge. So there is no question of GST. By way of providing corporate guarantee to any banking company or financial institution on behalf of the said recipient shall be deemed to be 1% of the amount of guarantee or actual consideration whichever is higher okay now people I want you to read about personal guarantee yourself you read it and let me know you read you read personal guarantee yourself
done done so is it a supply yes what will be the value <laughs> can't be determined zero what if consideration is charged and then you will have to charge gst okay corporate guarantee corporate guarantee will you determine the value as per rule 28 yes will it be liable to gst yes now the word service is missing here just add that done okay any service provided by indian railways is now covered by forward charge do we know this yes okay this is a important entry fourth one service provided to government authority in relation to certain activities has been exempted careful to government authorities let me give you some background service provided by government is generally exempt service provided to government is generally taxable but you remember there was a exemption for to government as well to government pure service or composite supply where goods element does not exceed 25% that means majorly a service contract if it is for function under 243g or 243w of the constitution then it enjoys a exemption i'll give you an example repair of street light maintenance of footpath all these are to be done by government government gives contract to third party vendors whether it will enjoy an exemption the answer is yes it will enjoy an exemption but goods element wo jo bulb change kar raha hai na goods element should not exceed 25% yaad aaya there was one more exemption ration shop related two exemptions were there when services are provided to government abhi what is added now service provided to government authority careful government and local authority were already there exemption related to government or local authority was already there now they have added governmental authority i'll tell you the reason in gujarat there is one local authority municipality but water supply is given to another entity which is a separate entity same way in delhi there is a delhi municipal authority but water supply is given to delhi jal board so there is a separate entity which is a governmental authority it is not local authority why did government do all this sir so that for water supply for power supply there should be some separate authority who can clearly manage these particular activities ab when government authority is taking a service relating to water supply you understand this very carefully yeah can be asked in the exam because they will give you this why they will give you this to government authority they will say mr a is providing service to government authority 
in relation to water supply which is a function interested under 243g or 243w of the constitution listen to me very carefully water supply ke liye normally government authority will not charge anything for that particular service because this is a function under 243g covered by negative list so here gst will not be charged on the output now if you make this taxable what will happen if you make this taxable then the cost will increase so what government has done is service in relation to five key activities given to governmental authority enjoys a exemption no gst sir no gst will apply for five functions there are five separate functions plus let me tell you for some things na they don't charge at all is it sir yes some things are done free by governmental authority when their output is free if you charge gst on the purchase side it becomes a cost and it increases the cost of those things which are given free of cost hence this exemption has been added two important things to know what are those five key elements service provided to government authority by way of water supply public health hospitals sanitation conservancy wo jo water supply karta hai na they only get this job solid waste management garbage slum improvement and upgradation these five activities any service in relation to these five activities will enjoy an exemption where can institute make us do a mistake they will give you something other than these five or they will give you these five you need to be very careful you just don't go by the word government authority because this is not a plain exemption this is a exemption which has various elements abhi you remember this pure service this was a plain exemption any kind of service which is 243g 243w of the constitution and 243g 243w has such a big list it could be anything but this two government authority has picked up only five key functions of 243g 243w of the constitution water supply public health sanitation solid waste management slum improvement only these five will get the benefit what is the definition of government authority any authority or board set up by an act of parliament or state legislature established by any government with 90% or more participation by way of equity or control to carry out a function interested to municipality under 243w or panchayat under 243g of the constitution i have a question to you this will apply to roman 2 or roman 1 or both now let me tell you this is a matter of contention even in courts as of now and issue is still chal raha hai because there is a semicolon here and there is a comma here in my view it will apply to both why sir if it was not to apply to both then they would have just continued this sentence after this but it is not continued it is given separately so to my understanding it will apply to both is it sir yes but uh, one more interpretation which is there in the industry is as there is a semicolon this particular thing ends here and this sentence is only for roman 2 will institute asks us this sir no 
they will give you government authority please don't worry people please don't worry okay हाँ मुंबई से एक क्वेश्चन आ गया अदानी ग्रुप डेवलपिंग धारावी हाँ अदानी ग्रुप गवर्नमेंटल अथॉरिटी वेरी गुड चलो लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड ओके सर्कुलर नंबर 206 केम ऑन 31 अक्टूबर शुड इट अप्लाई फॉर मे 24 एग्जाम्स इन माय व्यू यस बट लेट मी टेल यू इंस्टीट्यूट हैज नॉट केप्ट इट इन May 24 statutory update. So May 24 will delete this entire circular. November 24 just mention a small cross. It might come in future. Entire circular. Entire circular institute has not kept it for May 24. Maybe they don't keep it for November 24 as well. I'm not sure. When will we get to know sir? Somewhere in uh, um, June, July. That's when we'll get to know. Okay. So this entire circular is not there. Come to point number six. Point number six on page nine. Composition scheme. Read this line. Do you know this? Supplier of goods. Can he supply through e-commerce operator and also take composition scheme? The answer is yes, it is permitted. What about services? Services? No, not permitted. Okay. Then let's, uh, okay, you please read these two points and tell me whether you know it. Yes, good. So have we discussed these two points? Yes, Omnibus, we are very well aware. Indian Railways, we know. Transportation of goods from outside India to India. Vessel, that is removed. RCM entry is removed. We saw the impact. We are reading it now. Okay, Abhi, director providing services, let me see people how well you can answer this. Director getting salary from company, whether RCM will apply? Winning answer, no GST, negative list, wonderful. The day you start charging GST on negative list, that's the end. Negative list is not part of turnover also. You remember this? Yes. Only at one place it gets added to E. Wo bhi do entry. Sub negative list nahi. Only two things of negative list get added to E. Land and building. And second one is duty free shop to an incoming passenger at the arrival terminal in the international airport. Okay. Sitting fees. Uh, sir, sitting fees, yeah, GST is applicable, taxable under reverse charge mechanism. Who will pay the tax? Obviously, sir, director will pay the tax. Okay. Director giving personal guarantee for a consideration. Personal guarantee for a consideration. Personal guarantee for consideration. Uh, yes, sir, taxable for a consideration a ah, forward reverse <laughs> taxable forward charge people government has clarified that director giving a service to company rcm will apply 
only when he is giving services in the capacity of a director not in his personal capacity if he is giving a service in the capacity of a director then he will be covered under rcm if he is giving something in his personal capacity because personal guarantee is in personal capacity personal guarantee will come under forward charge samajh mein aaya okay last one director giving a property on rent renting of immobile property this may be let's have fun residential and commercial ha huh. i am sure you don't remember this but let's see if you can answer correctly director has a property renting of immobile property and given to a company company is obviously a registered person very good some of you remember wonderful very good okay let me tell you residential property taxable under rcm there is a separate entry is it sir yes you remember there is a separate entry for residential property given to a registered person now this rcm is not because of director entry this rcm is because of some other entry you understood you understood very important point on this i think institute can test if the question paper is difficult then they will try to test on this because this is circular circular may exception exception may where rcm is applicable in one case and commercial property taxable forward charge because it is in his personal capacity please go ahead and read the circular and then this i want you to write and keep people this you have to write and keep ye likh ke rakho this is something where if the question paper is tricky na this will be there in your examination read the circular first first you have a look at the circular director services and then you write this and great
will move forward we'll do two more discussions then take a break okay now other changes related to online money gaming are covered separately we will discuss that later okay let's see this definition of e you remember e let's see reference to transportation of goods in a vessel from india to outside india is removed from exclusions from e there was a entry transportation of goods in a vessel from india to outside india obviously wo that was a taxable supply there was no purpose of keeping it as a exclusion from e because anyways it is a taxable supply and taxable supply is not part of e now government has removed that second supply of goods by duty free shop to incoming passengers will be considered as e even though duty free shop are considered outside the custom frontier of india even though duty free shops are outside india still when they supply to incoming passengers it will be considered as e when it is considered as e will you have to do itc reversal for this okay read the next one block credit do you know that obviously yes sir they might give you this question okay circular number 195 warranty as of now it is not included in statutory update is a very big circular not sure why institute has not included it but this is not there in the statutory update so as it is not there in the statutory update will not be learning in future can they add it yes in fact this was a very good circular बट अच्छा है नहीं है ओके नाउ कम टू पेज नंबर ट्वेल्व सर्क्यूलर नंबर वन नाइंटी नाइन क्लैरिफिकेशन ऑन टैक्सीबिलिटी ऑफ सर्विसेस प्रोवाइडेड बाय एन ऑफिस ऑफ अ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन वन स्टेट टू ऑफिस ऑफ दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इन अदर अदर स्टेट बोथ बीइंग डिस्टिंग पर्सनस दिस इज uh you remember uh input service distributor ha sir kuch to yaad hai let me give you an example head office and branch office head office is in mumbai branch office is in ahmedabad now there can be two types of services one is external services like ca service taken by head office now ca service which is taken for audit is it for the entire organization taken together the answer is yes it is for the entire organization taken together now the question is should this be transferred and some part be kept in head office and some part be transferred to branch office yes there is a mechanism called as isd say suppose yahan 10000 ka service hai 8000 is consumed in head office we will take a isd registration isd will get this invoice 
8000 they will transfer here and 2000 they will transfer here this is the mechanism how isd works now the question was whether there can be a cross charge this is option 1 isd option 2 is ho can charge 2002 branch office by raising a gst invoice see this carefully people impact dono mein same hoga case 1 is isd mechanism which i am keeping in yellow case 1 isd mechanism can you tell me isd mechanism mein kitna ho ko gaya 8000 how much has gone to branch 2000 now let's talk about case 2 which is cross charge case 2 10000 was charged here i'll keep it in blue case 2 10000 is charged to ho 2000 ho is transferred to branch how much is there with ho 8000 how much has gone to branch 2000 now the question was are both the practices acceptable first one is called as isd mechanism and second one is called as cross charge are both acceptable department officers used to say nahi nahi you have to do isd only cbic finally came up with a clarification that isd is also fine cross charge is also fine are you clear with this plus you won't believe cbic has said if branch office can take full itc then in that case even zero is fine if branch office can take full itc then even zero is fine that means even if you have not raised that gst invoice for 2000 that is also fine first class sir acha if full itc is not available then in that case open market value that is 2000 pay gst you have to charge clear with this okay this is external invoices what about internally generated invoice uh, work meaning ho may there are employees there are employees in head office who are working in accounts department and accounts is completely controlled by ho marketing is only done by ho branch office is only managing sales then the question is is ho providing a service to branch office our officers used to say yes head office is providing service to branch office employees of the same company ah huh? employees of the same company but employee of head office is providing service to branch office cbic clarified that employee cost is not required to be attributed to branch office but if there is some other cost relating to any other service say suppose one small repair service which was to be done from external person but internally only that is being done internally generated services you have two options one either if the other person can take full itc then in that case zero is fine if the other person cannot take itc then in that case open market value so internally generated invoices you again have two alternatives if recipient can take full itc no problem if recipient cannot take full itc then open market value gst will have to be charged samajh mein aaya okay so this is basically for external and internally generated invoices will employee cost be included in all this 
the answer is no employee cost will not be included but what if i have included earlier sir that is fine but employee cost will not be included because employee is for the entire organization and employee salary is covered by you know it negative list clear with this yes okay we will have a look at this circular after the break 10 o'clock away 10 30 milte okay then we will have a look at this chaliye ha kisi ko koi screenshot wagera chahiye ho to please bol dena i'll show it so we were on page number 12 we discussed about ho and branch for externally generated invoices of third party vendors and common input services and internally generated invoices let's have a look at the circular let's have a look at it together first whether ho can avail itc in respect of common input services procured from third party but attributable to both ho and branch office or exclusively used for one or more branch office and issued tax invoice under section 31 to the said branch office for said input services and can branch office avail itc on the same or whether it is mandatory for ho to follow isd mechanism is isd mechanism mandatory or e can it be done through tax invoice as well isd mechanism is not mandatory it can be done through tax invoice as well both the options are available a business entity has head office in one state and branch office in other states ho procures some input services like security services for entire organization ho also provides some other services to own branches which will be called as internally generated services let's see the clarifications input service procured from third party for entire organization by ho but attributable to both ho or branch office or exclusively to one branch office has an option circle the word option very critical word has an option to distribute itc of such common input services by isd mechanism or can issue tax invoice under section 31 to concerned branch office and branch office can then avail itc on common itc subject to 16 and 17 obviously if it is block credit then you will not get itc however the distribution of itc in respect of common input services procured from third party can be made through isd mechanism only if when can isd be used it gets registered mandatorily as isd you have to take a mandatory registration as isd and said input services are attributable to said branch office or have been actually provided to the branch office obviously isd you will distribute only when it is attributable to that branch office then whether the cost of all components including salary of the ho employees involved in providing said service has to be included in computation of value of service provided by ho to branch when full itc can be availed by branch in respect of internally generated services provided by ho to branch value declared in the invoice shall be deemed to be open market value under rule 28 irrespective of the fact whether cost of a particular component like employee has been included or not it does not matter if you are able to take full itc then whatever you write on the invoice that is accepted what if ho is not issuing a itc not issuing invoice but full itc is available what if ho has not issued a invoice at all 
is that also fine cbic said no problem anyways we will take it as zero see the key point here is can full itc be availed by the branch office if full itc can be availed by branch office then there will not be any problem because anyways the other person is going to take full itc in such cases value of service may be deemed to be declared as nil by ho2 branch and may be deemed to be open market value it will be taken as zero but what if full itc is not available if full itc is not available then cost of salary of employees is still not mandatorily required to be included in computing taxable value salary cost will still not be included whether you can take full itc or not doesn't matter salary is for the employee who is for the entire organization and that salary is covered by negative list how do i charge that to my branch officers just imagine head office employees charging salary of head office employees to branch officers because some functions are performed for the organization as a whole doesn't make sense that's what cbic has clarified okay okay now comes an important topic registration one very good amendment has happened relating to registration of a person okay let me give you some background people section 22 deals with persons liable to register section 24 deals with compulsory registration and section 23 deals with persons not liable to register first i have a question for you 22 versus 24 which is stronger people okay <laughs> let me tell you 24 is stronger why sir because 24 talks about compulsory registration even if you are not liable to register under 22 if you are covered under 24 compulsory registration i'll give you an example say suppose i am liable to pay under rcm but my turnover is 2 lakh my turnover is 2 lakh so i am not liable to register but still 24 will require me to register if i am liable to pay under rcm or if i do a interstate supply of goods okay then let's talk about 22 versus 23 22 versus 23 22 versus 23 23 is stronger say suppose i have a turnover of 70 lakh only exempt supply 70 lakh only exempt supply should i register uh no sir why because 23 is stronger so if you are covered under 23 you'll not be covered under 22 okay last one was the biggest issue 23 versus 24 23 not liable 24 liable now the question was what to do in this we used to write 23 is stronger because 23 is giving a relief and 23 will be considered as stronger compared to all other provisions now let me tell you this and this have been incorporated in the law is it sir yes now it is provided clearly in the law that is the first change that 23 is stronger than 24 and 22 but while making this amendment na they have done one thing which may create issues in future like let me 
tell you what all was there in 23 first one only exempt goods or exempt service if you are only supplying exempt goods or exempt service not liable to register agriculturist not liable to register if you are only supplying something which is covered by RCM that means other person is liable to pay tax so what will you do taking registration then there was services through e-commerce operator up to 10 lakh 20 lakh no need to register fifth one was interstate handicraft goods interstate handicraft goods and here also the limit was not 40 here also the limit was 20 and 10 notified handicraft goods which will anyways be given in the question now see interstate if I am supplying goods and it is handicraft notified goods should I register mandatorily no 10 lakh 20 lakh will be applicable other goods which I am selling outside the state mandatory registration this you had learnt correct so we always said 23 is stronger than 24 now what has government done government has said yes 23 is stronger than 24 but there is one problem these two come under 23 subsection 1 and these three come under 23 subsection 2 now 23 subsection 2 has been amended saying that it will override 24 now the problem is what about 23 1 will it not override 24 what government has done is 23 2 will override 24 so these three are very clear that these three will override 24 so if you fall under 24 you have to ignore 24 for these three but what about 23 1 in my view though it's not clearly given in the law 23 1 says not liable to register and 23 2 says exempted from registration and this is when government has a power to specify those persons who are exempted from taking registration in my view 23 1 is already stronger to 24 because it comes from the law saying not liable to register as this said exempted from registration it was important to make it stronger than 24 and that's why the change has happened only in 23 2 not in 23 1 so sir what should we do you should continue with the same practice 23 is stronger than 24 but sir 23 1 they have not added now you can take that interpretation but 23 1 is so stronger that if I say 24 is stronger than 23 1 it will lead to lot of issues it will lead to lot of issues because the language of the law which I am going to show you in two minutes is such that the interpretation interpretation of 23 1 being a weaker provision will never hold good because when we compare 1 and 2 which is stronger amongst 1 and 2 can you just think and tell me which is stronger amongst 1 and 2 1 is a clean statement not liable 2 exemption from registration is given that to subject to various conditions 1 is immediately stronger compared to 2 now when 2 is overriding 24 hey, one second one second 2 which is a weaker provision is overriding 24 
and one does not override 24 this happened in finance act 2023 when the finance bill came na they had mentioned it at the top of 23 when finance bill came they had mentioned that both will override 24 but then in finance act na they mentioned it only in 23 2 because they realized that 23 1 is anyway stronger it is a clean plain statement of not liable how can it be weaker than 24 so the end conclusion is 23 remains to be stronger than 24 and 22 with the amendment okay now one point has been added here and this will also be in the same basket one point has been added here see services through e-commerce operator no need to register up to 10 lakh 20 lakh now they have added goods through e-commerce operator up to registration limit that means 10 lakh 20 lakh 40 lakh why have they done this can you tell me something related to this which we discussed some time back they have done this for a specific purpose exactly right open network digital commerce ondc yes now even an unregistered person can sell goods through e-commerce operators no need to register but please understand why government did this elections coming i mean no i mean see retailers small retail shop should be able to sell online even if he is unregistered even if he is a composition dealer so two amendments made for this one composition dealer can sell through e-commerce operator goods second is this amendment unregistered person can also sell through e-commerce operator up to registration limit do you agree that this is a good benefit before elections very good benefit sir let me tell you all good benefits in indirect access come with conditions and the conditions are current year and preceding financial year turnover should not exceed these limits uh, together or separately sir separately neither your preceding financial year turnover should exceed registration limit nor current financial year turnover should exceed registration limit second you should have a pan easy condition ah sir pan is easy third based on pan an enrollment number is to be taken on the common portal this is not a gst number it's just an enrollment number saying that i am enrolled under gst fourth you cannot sell in more than one state more than one state not allowed sir no more than one state not allowed you can take only in one state e cannot do interstate supply no interstate supply and once you cross a registration limit you have to take registration enrollment number will be cancelled that's what the law has prescribed so if you follow all these conditions then you can supply goods through e-commerce operator if you technically see all these conditions will be satisfied by a small retail shop and that's the aim of bringing this just keep small retail shop in your mind you'll be able to understand that all these conditions are being satisfied by that small retail shop clear okay let's have a look at the provision let's see this is the same page but uh, I did not keep this page at the beginning because lot of conditions have been added. Let's see. Person not liable to register. This is same. Exclusively dealing with exempt goods or something which is not liable. Same. 
agriculturist in relation to cultivation of land individual and huf same c amendment here you'll write this is the amendment first line this much is the amendment that's it notwithstanding anything contained in 221 that is registration limit and 24 government may on the recommendation of council by notification specify categories of persons who may be exempted from obtaining registration under the above provision central government has exempted the following persons careful what have they added they have added that these will override 24 i have a question whether a and b will override 24 C will override twenty four and twenty two one also. Whether A and B will override twenty two one and twenty four? The answer is yes. Think logically as well. Say suppose my turnover is seventy lakh. Doctor, healthcare service only. Should I register? no sir you should not register because only healthcare service only exempt service you fall under a and do you agree a is stronger than 221 matlab registration limit obviously yes sir obviously yes so please understand a and b are much more superior provisions compared to c a and b are so superior that there was no necessity to give a relief to them and hence a and b will enjoy a complete relief but sir if a question comes in exam can we write both the views my recommendation yes tell me one thing when will you write both the views for a and b or for c you will write both the views for a and b because a and b specifically don't override 24 but c specifically overrides 24 so c there is no problem at all c will override compulsory registration come what may a and b even today do i am saying you everything can there be a different interpretation the answer is yes because at the end of the day it is taxation law in fact this was also not there but you remember drawing this in the class though nothing was said but we always kept 23 stronger that's the whole point that even now when the amendment has taken place only in c we are still taking a position of a and b also being stronger than 24 clear with this okay now now these things remain same uh this bricks and tiles etc last point here you'll write this is the amendment balance is just old one this is the amendment goods through e-commerce operator where tcs is applicable let's read person making supply of goods through e-commerce operator who is required to collect tax under section 52 that is tcs and having aggregate turnover in preceding and current circle circle never has such provision come always in registration now we saw see current financial year in exemption chapter we see preceding financial year in registration chapter we see current financial year but for this one point we have to see current financial year as well as preceding financial year not exceeding 10 lakh 20 lakh 40 lakh subject to the following additional conditions circle the word not make interstate supply you can't supply outside the state small retail shop only sell within the state 
shall not make supply of goods through e-commerce operator in more than one state small retail shop you can't have two to three retail shop and then say i am unregistered i want to sell online such person shall be required to have a pan and will have to declare the same on the portal along with address of place of business and the state in which he seeks to make such supply which shall be subject to validation by common portal common portal validate it will validate it with cbdt database on successful validation enrollment number will be granted such person shall not be granted more than one enrollment number in a state obviously he'll get only one no supply shall be made through eco unless he obtains enrollment number this is time pass one says you have to take enrollment number second one says you can't supply without enrollment number we know where a person subsequently is granted registration okay once registration is granted is there any value to enrollment number <laughs> no that's what it says if registration is granted enrollment number will cease from the effective date of registration okay right like one is you can't sell outside the state second is you can't have branches outside the state not reading properly sir what if the e-commerce operator allows him to sell outside the state congratulations in some time we will read penalty e-commerce operator has to pay penalty equivalent to the tax on such goods ha huh? dangerous sir dangerous uh, will hey, all benefits are good but all benefits come with various conditions can't sell outside the state sir okay okay procedure for registration now uh, see this procedure points are kept so that you can read all the points from here amendment is this one this part page number 15 at the end you remember bank details were required to be given bank details earlier it was 45 days from grant of registration or due date of gst return whichever is earlier now it is changed 30 days from grant of registration or date of furnishing outward supply under section 37 outward supply under section 37 is gstr 1 iff you remember iff iff invoice furnishing facility correct invoice furnishing facility hmm under qrmp quarterly return monthly payment okay chalo then ha huh, this physical verification this is an amendment okay physical verification can be done before grant of registration or after grant of registration if it is done after grant of registration all the details have to be submitted within 15 working days this was already there if it is done before grant of registration then officer has to upload everything at least 5 days prior to the completion of time period of 30 days from the date of submission of application let me give you a recall do you remember that in some cases 7 working days is replaced by 30 days you remember this 7 working days replaced by 30 days when you don't opt for aadhar authentication when you opted but did not complete aadhar authentication where the officer feels that it is a fit case to do physical verification before grant of registration or identified by common portal where common portal has identified that 
based on data analysis and risk parameters physical verification should be done before grant of registration like say suppose in one building there are 50 registration being taken in one floor 50 registration one floor will common portal get a doubt yes so based on data analysis it will say go to this place there might be some there might be a case where building is only not there so in that cases government has clearly said that if it is identified by common portal still seven working days will be replaced by 30 days now whenever it is replaced by 30 days that means officer will do a physical verification when officer is doing a physical verification before grant of registration officer has to complete physical verification in how many days can you tell me maximum how many days should he complete physical verification and submit the report online 25 dekho because he has to submit the report at least 5 days prior to the completion of 30 days so he has to complete physical verification aise nahi ki 27 day pahunch gaya ha abhi karta hu physical verification he has to complete physical verification at least 5 days prior to the completion of 30 days did you understand this they can give you a question on this huh? because they will link it to this also the requirement of presence of registered person at the time of physical verification is removed it is not necessary ki when officer is coming for physical verification i have to be there my employees may be there someone else might be there it's not necessary that i have to be present at the time of physical verification okay okay suspension people if a person does not give bank details his registration will be suspended do you remember the difference between suspension and cancellation suspension is temporary cancellation is gone then you have to apply for revocation of cancellation now if bank details are not given bank details 30 days if bank details are not given then registration will be suspended now you tell me once registration is suspended if you give the bank details will it be revoked yes no ah, mark it important for case study they can give you this people case study one good four mark question very simple but good question they will link bank details suspension and revocation of suspension this is not revocation of cancellation this is revocation of suspension let's see if there is a contravention of the provisions of rule 10a that is bank details by registered person then registration shall be suspended further where registration has been suspended for contravention of 10a and registration is not yet cancelled till now it has not been cancelled only suspended the suspension of registration shall be deemed to be revoked upon compliance of the provision of rule 10a if you give the bank details immediately before cancellation then in that case suspension will be revoked okay people do you remember revocation of cancellation aisa kuch suna hua hoga 30 days plus 30 days plus 30 days 30 days plus 30 days plus 30 days yes yes something you have heard now it is changed <laughs> again changed sir yes again changed now it is 90 days initial period plus extension of 180 days total 270 days lot of time given because one of the court had given a direction to government saying that 
chota he only wants to pay taxes why you are rejecting and not allowing revocation then government said okay i'll allow more time to apply only for revocation 90 plus 180 you need to remember the wordings 90 is the initial time 180 can be given by commissioner or any officer not below additional commissioner or joint commissioner this you need to remember okay let me see whether you remember this there was one rule 88c which said if there is a mismatch between gstr 1 and 3b then a notice will be issued say suppose gstr 1 you showed 100 rupees as sales gstr 3b you showed 10 rupees as sales do you know from where do you pay taxes yes we pay taxes through 3b and when is our recipient happy our recipient is happy when we file gstr 1 because the moment we file gstr 1 it gets communicated to my recipient in gstr 2b so one recipient is happy 3b government is happy now if some person is doing this cheating 100 year 10 year sales then in that case a notice will be issued to him once a notice is issued he has to either reply within 7 days or pay the differential amount otherwise recovery will start that's what the provision rule 88c says now they have added rule 88d what is 88d sir 88c deals with 1 and 3b 88d deals with 2b and 3b can you help me in which case will they issue a notice case 1 case 2 i need your help in which case will they issue a notice case 1 case 2 <laughs> okay okay two wrong answers everyone else is correct and the winning answer is case 2 are pehle wale mein they will not do anything people agar people to be 100 is coming but what you are claiming is only 80 government is happy government will say good person only if you have claimed more in 3b compared to 2b then a notice will come again same procedure you have to reply or pay the difference but here direct recovery will not start because this is not a self assessed tax direct recovery will not start here notice will be issued under 73 74 what is 73 what is 74 sir 73 deals with other than fraud cases 74 deals with fraud cases okay let's have a look market for five mark theory they can ask you direct five mark theory on this a hey, case one was this this 80 we are doing 88 d see it carefully people concentrate we we are talking about 88 d case one case two it it see we had learnt earlier in the classes chalo let's read manner of dealing with difference in itc available in auto generated statement and itc availed in the return itc availed in the return is gstr 3b let's see if the amount of itc availed by a registered person in 3b exceeds itc available in 2b by such amount and such percentage as may be prescribed is anything prescribed till now sir no the said registered person shall be intimated of such difference in part a of drc 1c drc demand and recovery on the common portal and 
email address careful no registered post no registered post no only common portal and email the intimation will direct to either pay access itc availed along with interest through form drc03 or explain the difference in 70s if the registered person either pays access itc or furnishes reply giving the reasons for difference that's what you have to do as a registered person where the amount is not paid or reply is not found acceptable then the said amount shall be liable to be demanded under 73 or 74 it will be demanded from the person with a notice okay people let me see whether you can answer this tcs is 0.5% cgst 0.5% sgst or 1% igst who collects tcs sir e commerce operator is it sir yes eco collects when two conditions are satisfied supply is through e commerce operator payment is also through e commerce operator two conditions supply through e commerce operator payment through e commerce operator now my question to you is when a unregistered person is supplying through e commerce operator whether tcs will be applicable and first of all can a unregistered person supply through e commerce operator okay uh, whether tcs will be applicable just answer whether tcs will be applicable whether tcs will be applicable whether tcs will be applicable and the winning answer is no tcs no tcs sir no tcs this is said by government now trust me in our notes relating to tcs we have already written this is it sir yes and we had discussed this also now government has issued a special procedure saying that if the supplier is unregistered then tcs will not be applicable is it sir yes okay composition dealer composition dealer through e-commerce operator sir did we discuss this earlier no because earlier was composition dealer allowed to supply through e-commerce operator no earlier composition dealer was not allowed to sell through e-commerce operator even today services not possible i mean services cannot be supplied through e-commerce operator if you are under composition scheme goods is it allowed now yes and tcs is applicable is it sir yes tcs will be applicable now see it very carefully i am a retail shop i am unregistered can i sell online yes will tcs apply no okay i am a retail shop can i supply goods through e-commerce operator yes will tcs apply yes now you tell me tcs gets credited to e cash ledger or e credit ledger cash or credit first one second one cash You remember composition dealer can only pay through e cash ledger so composition dealer will easily be able to use this tcs to pay his liability clear with this okay last question you have been answering perfectly last question can i supply interstate in this and this 
interstate never never that's also mentioned in the special procedure okay great let's have a look special procedure Special procedure to be followed by e-commerce operator required to collect tax at source under section 52 in respect of supply of goods made by composition taxpayer. It shall not allow interstate. Uh -huh. You can't allow interstate. It shall collect TCS. Oh, you have to collect TCS. It shall furnish the details of supply in GSTR 8. What is GSTR 8 sir? TCS return. Basically you call it as a statement. TCS statement. Okay. Now second one. Special procedure to be followed by e-commerce operator required to collect tax when goods are specified supplied by specific unregistered person circle unregistered person why does it say specific unregistered person sir you just learnt so many conditions to be met only then that small retail shop can sell online oh, he has to take one enrollment number he should have a pan he can't be in more than one state oh, everything has to be met okay first one he should have a enrollment number okay should not make interstate supply shall not collect tax see the difference between composition and unregistered they can give you a mixed question of composition and unregistered and you have to help the e-commerce operator then you'll have to write this entire thing very important for exam people and lastly you have to furnish all the details on gstr 8 so we have to still furnish sir yes though you are not collecting tcs but you have to furnish how many unregistered person are supplying through your website okay okay now let me tell you ondc has opened something new there can be supplier side e-commerce operator and there can be recipient size e-commerce operator two e-commerce operators sir huh. on ondc na there can be two e-commerce operator one supplier side e-commerce operator one recipient side e-commerce operator my question to you is who will be liable to collect tax s or r And the winning answer is after reading this. You read, people. Winning answer is supplier side e commerce operator. If multiple e commerce operators are involved, then obviously. The person who is releasing the payment to the supplier because then only he'll be able to collect TCS. Na? So supplier side e-commerce operator has to make TCS. Okay. Okay. So now there is one small circular relating to section 53. What is this section 53 interest, sir? Let me give you a background. If ITC is wrongly availed and utilized, then in that case, interest at 18% per annum from the date of utilization till the date of reversal. This was the provision that ITC interest will apply only when you have wrongly availed and utilized. Both the conditions have to be satisfied. Now the question was, say suppose my balance in 
e credit ledger is 40 lakh wrongly availed itc is 30 lakh will interest apply i need your help will interest apply by e credit ledger has 40 lakh balance wrongly availed itc is 30 lakh will interest apply very good very good so happy okay the winning answer is no interest will apply because you have not yet availed it when is it said to be availed sir only when the balance in e credit ledger falls below the wrongly availed itc that's when it is said to be utilized now the question is this 40 lakh should i check ics separately or ics together <laughs> this 40 lakh should i check ics separately or ics together cbici has clarified that ics together good 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 for us now don't argue huh? good good for us <laughs> yes sir very good <laughs> it's logical as well do you remember that i has to be used first before using c and s ha ah, so see just because i have used i doesn't mean i have utilized i i don't have an option the law requires me to use i before c and s to wo mera galti thode i have to use i na wo mere paas option nahi hai that's why they have said together but what about compensation says government has said compensation says has to be seen separately so ics together compensation says separately because compensation says cannot be used to pay ics or vice versa clear with this great is circulars are easy because you will be able to get the circular very easily okay in fact one last circular multiple e-commerce operator interesting case see where there is a supplier and there is a e-commerce operator supplier is say suppose tata and e-commerce operator is flipkart can you tell me who will collect tcs eco okay wonderful wonderful now say suppose jksc is the supplier and jksc has e-commerce operator he, they are the e-commerce operator they are supplying goods or services online they are only the suppliers bill is being raised by jksc will tcs apply in this case no tcs thank you so much now jksc is selling it on another e-commerce platform and this is recipient side e-commerce operator then in that case whether tcs will apply the answer is yes tcs will be applicable very good circular issued ye hum log padh ke dekhenge bahut acha circular hai say suppose normally supplier side e-commerce operator will do the tcs but if the supplier eco and supplier is same and there is another eco involved then in that case this another eco even though he is recipient side eco he will have to do tcs let's have a look at this because if the question paper is tricky na they will ask you such questions where multiple e-commerce operators involved in a single transaction of goods or services through 
e-commerce platform compliance under section 52 including TCS will be done as follows where the supplier side e-commerce operator is himself not a supplier of said supply he is not the supplier of the said supply in such situation the compliances under section 52 including TCS is to be done by supplier side eco who releases payment to the supplier for a particular supply made by the supplier through him in this case buyer side eco is neither required to collect TCS nor required to make other compliances under section 52 B point I want you to read independently have a look right so earlier na we had only amazon and flipkart amazon is the supplier side eco recipient side eco hey, they are managing both the persons correct does amazon have both the data supplier data as well as recipient data obviously yes have you heard of an app called as cred cred suna hai? Nahi? Cred is where you can make some online credit card payment. Abhi, on Cred, there will be some product which is listed on Amazon. Huh? Huh. You can buy Amazon listed product from Cred. So, who is the supplier side e-commerce operator? Amazon. Who is the recipient side e-commerce operator? Cred. Aisa <laughs> bhi hota hai sir. Everything happens today, people. Eco me eco hai. <laughs> so one e-commerce operator is helping other e-commerce operators to sell its product. <laughs> Nothing, people. Hey, there is one supplier. There is one recipient. There is Amazon here. There is Cred here. So recipient is going on Cred app. Supplier is listing on Amazon app. Both are connected through ONDC. Third also, sir, huh, on a network, basically. Who will do the compliance is the issue. All this happened because of open network digital commerce. Yeah, there are hundreds of examples like this. But you don't think too much about the examples. You think about which e-commerce operator is required to collect TCS. Clear? Okay. Great. Okay. Let's see invoice return eway bill amendments. Small amendments. Rule one uh, forty six. Rule forty six particulars to be mentioned on an invoice. It says even if the value is up to 50,000 name of the state has to be mentioned when the supply is through e-commerce by e-commerce or OIDR service to unregistered person or online money gaming even if it is up to 50,000 see if it is more than 50,000 or equal to 50,000 name and address is required mandatory sir name and address is mandatory if it is 50,000 or more but if it is less than 50,000 still you have to mention name of the state can you tell me what is the use of name of state for the states place of supply the states will get the revenue only when it is clearly declared that the recipient is in their state and that's the reason 
government has made it mandatory to mention the name of state even if it is up to 50000 so more than 50000 anyways name and address have to be written less than 50000 again name and ad- sorry state has to be mentioned that state is deemed to be address of the recipient time to make a mistake jksc face to face branch selling or uh, uh, providing coaching service for 15 15000 is name of state required face to face branch apne course ka admission liya 15000 15 nahi chahiye jksc online website jksc online website is selling a course for 9999 is name of state required uh-huh. yes taki government ko theek se tax mil sake samajh mein aaya because offline na it's very easy to identify online government is like how anything online even if it is up to 50000 please mention the state name okay okay e invoice limit reduced from 10 crore to 5 crore that anyways you know now i have a interesting discussion let me tell you e invoice is applicable only for b2b transactions and export there are only two categories where e invoice is required b2b transaction that is registered person to registered person and second one is export now government department has only taken tds registration mr a is supplying to government department the question was whether e invoice is required whether e invoice is required to be raised by mr a what do you think whether e invoice is required to be issued by mr a CBIC has clarified yes ah wonderful ah huh? see government department if they have taken registration only for tds they are regarded as unregistered person for oidr service you remember you remember so that they don't have to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism correct 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 for that they are regarded as unregistered person but when it comes to this they will be regarded as registered person because here the compliance is on government department or mr a mr a let him comply <laughs> government has said if government department has taken tds registration they are regarded as a registered person registered person to registered person e invoice will be applicable yeah, are you clear with this time to make a mistake i am sure you don't remember this what about government department raising invoice whether e invoice will be required no because they are specifically exempted ha kya sir ha when you read e invoice you will find government department is not required to issue e invoice hey are you clear with this okay important ah important they will try in case study because this is slightly tricky they might ask both the things market as important for case study people beautiful circular चलिए लेट्स हैव अ लुक इज ई इनवॉइस रिक्वायर्ड फॉर सप्लाई बाय रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन टू गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट और एस्टैब्लिशमेंट्स और गवर्नमेंट एजेंसी और लोकल अथॉरिटी और पीएसयू रजिस्टर्ड सोली फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ डिडक्शन ऑफ टैक्स अंडर सेक्शन 51 केयरफुल बाय रजिस्टर्ड पर्सन टू देम केयरफुल केयरफुल गवर्नमेंट डिपार्टमेंट 
establishment, government agency, local authority, PSU, registered solely for deduction of tax, are liable to compulsorily registered under section 24. Hence, they are treated as registered persons. Hence, e-invoice is required to be issued by registered persons who are required to issue e-invoice. So, is e-invoice required? The answer is yes. Okay, people, government has put a time limit. You cannot file the returns after three years from due date. That's your article ship period, old article ship period. After three years from due date, you cannot file returns. So, say suppose Jan 2024. Can you tell me the due date for GSTR 1 for Jan 2024? Uh, due date for GSTR 1 will be 11th Feb 2024. So, here say you can file it within 3 years. After this, can't file. Is it a good time limit? Very good time limit, people. But, sir, why has government provided all this? To put a cap. Otherwise, na, some court cases were happening and this happened in reality where court said there is no time limit to file a return. Return can be filed anytime. That's when government made this amendment. Let's have a look. This is there for section 37, section 39, 44, 52. What is missing? Final return. Final return. You can write and cut it. For all other returns, this will apply. But it's not there in final return. Let's see. A registered person shall not be allowed to furnish details of outward supply or furnish a return for a tax period after the expiry of three years from due date. Circle, circle, due date. Three years from due date for furnishing such details. In the exam, now you remember three years. You don't remember from where will it start. Mark and keep, you will remember it. Okay. However, government may on the recommendation of council by notification subject to such conditions and restrictions may allow registered person to furnish details of outward supply even after three years. Government may allow in some cases. Have they done anything sir? No. This is just a power. Okay. Okay, see GSTR 1 cannot be filed if 3B for previous month or previous quarter is not filed. If you don't file 3B, you cannot file 1. If you have not filed previous month 3B, you cannot file 1. Logical? Yes, because if you have not paid the tax, how can government allow you to file GSTR 1 for current period? Plus, if you have not filed one for previous month, you cannot file one for current month. It has to be done in an order. What is the amendment in this, sir? These two are amendments. These two are amendments. Balance was already there. Rule 88D and Rule 10A is added. What is Rule 88D, sir? 2B versus 3B mismatch. And 10A, bank details. Write and keep. Ye dono cheez agar apne contravene kiya, you will not be allowed to file GSTR 1. Why is government stopping GSTR 1 filing again and again? So that your recipient start shouting to be, he will not get ITC, he will start shouting at us. Correct. 
okay late fee late fee this remains same late fee for return and annual return this is same now institute has provided the actual late fee of 10 rupees and 25 rupees these have been provided this was there earlier as well but it was never included in syllabus we used to always learn 100 rupees because it was not there in the ICI module May 2024 module Institute has included late fee as applicable in real life what is the late fee applicable in real life sir late fee for 1 3 B and 4 if it is nil return then 10 rupees per day if it is other than nil return 25 rupees per day so that late fee is now incorporated late fee you are going to learn from this particular amendment sheet ignore the late fee which was there in the textbook ha, all this you have already learned annual return rationalization all this was already there but just don't learn from there you learn it from here because this 10 rupees and 25 rupees have been added otherwise it remains same when you compare now you'll find everything same except for that 10 rupees and 25 rupees okay ah good part rule 138f institute has not included in statutory update this has come in real life in fact karnataka has already implemented it let me give you one background then we'll close this gold silver precious stones is available required no now the government has added 138 f where it is required but only part a that is document details have to be filled not conveyance details syllabus may sir nay kya karna hai sir abhi to nay november 24 if institute adds then we'll have to take care but for may 24 rule 138 f is not there so whatever you have learnt that will hold good they have not included it okay now coming to some small small things uh, i mean uh, majorly procedural changes eh? Baki technical changes sirf one is left online money gaming that we will do in some time refund people do you remember there were two options IGST with payment of tax and without payment of tax yes which was better to get even capital goods refund with payment of GST because if you do with payment of GST na, you will get refund of capital goods as well you can use the entire ITC whatever you have paid that will be refunded to you so with payment of GST was very good as refund should a tobacco supplier get refund of with payment no sir ah, that's what government has done government has said some essential oils and tobacco suppliers will not get refund or with not be allowed to do with payment of GST transactions can they do without payment export yes people careful you can do zero rated supply there are two parts one export second one is supply to SCZ unit or developer now you have two options one is ZRS with payment of GST without payment of GST without payment is it allowed for everyone yes without payment allowed for everyone with payment allowed for everyone except few goods so if we fall under that few goods category then we cannot do with payment of IGST so two amendments have happened one this few goods have been added and second one 
ZRS supply to ACZ unit or developer for authorized operations. This word authorized operations is added. That means if it is for any purpose other than authorized operation. What is authorized operation sir? The operation for which you have got a license to operate in a SEZ unit. Infosys ke liye, what is authorized operations? Software exports or software services. If they book a banquet hall for employee party, then it will not qualify as ZRS because now ZRS will include only those supplies which are for authorized operation. Anything which is not for authorized operation will not qualify as zero rated supply. So two changes. One, with payment will be allowed only for all goods except few. Second, now the condition of authorized operation has to be met whenever you are supplying to SEZ unit or developer. Let's have a look. Zero rated supply. As per section 16, zero rated supply means any of the following supplies of goods or services namely. First one, export of goods or services, you are aware. Supply of goods or services or both for authorized operations to SEZ unit or developer. You will write amendment here. This is the amendment part. Written? Okay. Note 1. Government may on the recommendation of council and subject to such condition and safeguards specify a class of registered persons who may make zero rated supply on payment of integrated tax. A class of goods or services which may be exported on payment of tax. So government will tell us who can do with payment of tax. Has government told us who can do with payment of tax? Has government told us who can export with payment of tax? Has government told us who can supply with payment of tax? The answer is yes. They have told us. Let's see. Government wide notification 1 2023 allowed all goods or services. Wonderful. Everything was allowed sir. Everything is allowed except pan masala, certain specifies tobacco products, essential oils other than citrus fruit namely peppermint, spear mint, water mint, horse mint, bergamint, menta, arvenesis. Seems to be a science class. Should we remember this sir? Names are not required. You just need to know that few goods are not allowed. But let me tell you, you have to remember all these oil name because goods RCM is included in your syllabus. These are under RCM also. So yeah, essential oils ke naam yaad rakhne hi honge. Peppermint, spear mint, water mint, horse mint, bergamint, menta arvinis. Okay which may be exported on payment of IGST and on which supplier of such goods or services may claim refund. Supplier 2, circle 2, supplier 2, SEZ unit or developer for authorized operation is notified as class of persons who can claim refund. So can a SEZ, can a person supplying to SEZ also claim with payment of IGST? Yes. Wonderful. So see, yeah, class of persons bula na, class of persons ke liye ye aya. Supplier to ACZ. Class of goods, class of goods ke liye this came. So who is not allowed sir? Only pan masala, tobacco and essential oils. Other than that, everyone is allowed.
ओके लेट मी आस्क यू समथिंग इज इंटरेस्ट गिवन टू अस इफ गवर्नमेंट डिलेज रिफंड टू अस यस सर सिक्स परसेंट पर एन एम आफ्टर द एक्सपायरी ऑफ सिक्सटी डेज फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ फाइलिंग रिफंड एप्लीकेशन एंड इफ इट इज कमिंग थ्रू अ जजमेंट सिक्स परसेंट गेट्स रिप्लेस बाय नाइन परसेंट दिस इज वॉट वॉज देयर अर्लियर इवन टूडे इट इज देयर वॉट एज चेंज सर नाउ सी हाउ डज द रिफंड प्रोसेस वर्क you apply for refund now if there is a deficiency then he will you will have to file a new application correcting the deficiency is it sir ha then officer may issue a notice saying that all these points i don't like i mean these are not in order you are not eligible for refund once you receive notice you have to reply within 15 days and then officer will pass a order interest 60 days starts from here if there is no deficiency then directly from the application from application after expiry of 60 days we will start getting interest correct i have 15 days time to reply to the notice what if i reply in 20 days should i get this 5 days interest this is the amendment sir what is government doing government is saying when it is your mistake why should i pay interest a good good provision ah huh? this again they can test you this in the examination when we have delayed something why should government give us interest that's the change this was not there earlier let's have a look now you can see this second bullet right amendment here this is the amendment let's read interest is payable on such refund at 6% per annum and is pay interest is payable for the period of delay beyond 60 days from the date of receipt of application till the date of refund of tax to be computed in such manner and such conditions as may be prescribed government has prescribed that the following periods will be excluded for computing interest let's see what is excluded first a time period beyond 15 days from receipt of notice that applicant takes to furnish a reply or submit additional document if applicant has delayed why should government pay interest for applicants delay second any period of time taken either by applicant for furnishing correct details of bank account or validating such bank account when refund sanctioned has not been credited if we only don't validate our bank account or we only give wrong bank account details should we get interest the answer is no that's what government has done बाकी सेम है ओनली दिस वॉज दी अमेंडमेंट एरिया ओके रीड दिस एंड टेल मी वेदर यू अंडरस्टूड दिस ऑब्वियसली यू रिमेंबर सीटीपी एनआरटीपी हैव टू डिपॉजिट मनी इन ई कैश लेट बिफोर टेकिंग रजिस्ट्रेशन सो इफ देर इज एनी एक्सेस विच दे हैव पेड refund can be taken by them okay this fourth clarification is good for the industry let me see whether it, you remember something there was one rule 96a 
which used to say that if a exporter of goods has not exported within three months from invoice then he has to pay tax with interest within 15 days of the expiry and exporter of service if he does not get foreign currency within one year then in that case he has to pay tax with interest no oh, sorry export of service so goods the criteria is that you should export the goods within three months and you give a LUT you remember LUT letter of undertaking whenever you are exporting without payment of GST na, you give a letter of undertaking and what is written in that letter of undertaking if I am a good supplier and I don't export goods within three months then I will pay interest and tax if I am a service supplier if I don't get foreign currency within one year I will pay tax with interest this is the declaration which is given now you think if I have not exported within three months then I have to pay tax with interest I paid paid tax then exported now you tell me should I get a refund of this forget about refund of tax paid on purchases unutilized ITC that is different I am asking you whether you will get a refund of this our government officers were not giving saying that you have broken the terms we will not give you Are I have exported people I have exported at least give me the tax back CBIC clarified that even if you export after this or even if you get foreign currency after this still the export benefit will be eligible because essentially export is done are you cl clear with this yes okay clarifications are generally easy and trust me I don't know how but my students are able to answer the clarifications correctly so they are as good as CBIC correct sir Chalo, dekhte. let's have a look <laughs> ah, will you get a refund of interest ah, government will come home and give <laughs> never never okay let's see Clarification in respect of admissibility of refund where the exporter applies for refund subsequent to compliance of 96A. Huh. So you can claim refund of unutilized ITC also plus this tax which you have paid that also you can claim as refund. Just because you have not met the criteria doesn't mean that you have not met the export. If you have met the export you are eligible for refund and what tax you have paid that also you will get back okay it has been clarified that as long as the goods are actually exported careful careful very good words or as the case may be payment is realized for export of services so for goods exported for services foreign currency even if it is beyond the time frame of rule 96a benefit of zero rated supply cannot be denied Hence, in such cases, on actual export of goods or realization of payment for services, exporter would be entitled for refund. It is also clarified that in such cases, subsequent to export of goods or realization of payment, in case of export of services, the said exporter would be entitled to claim refund of integrated tax paid earlier on account of goods not being exported or payment not realized for services within the time frame of rule 96a so you'll get both the monies refund of unutilized itc 
plus whatever you paid because you did not export it within three months or did not get the foreign exchange within one year. Yeah, yeah, love to pay interest. Okay, again, have you heard about Russia? Russia, Sunay uh, Nasir, Russia. You know, uh, US has put sanctions on Russia, meaning they cannot easily use US dollars. In fact, India also cannot pay easily in US dollars to Russia. So, how do we pay people? Can we use INR? Yes. Now, RBI has permitted those through accounts. Financial management, you have heard. RBI has permitted those through accounts. Now, the question is through those through accounts, INR is coming into India and it is permitted by RBI. Will it qualify as export of service? Because one of the condition for export of service is you should receive foreign currency or INR as permitted by RBI. Foreign currency or INR as permitted by RBI. So, will we get export benefit if we get INR from Russia as permitted by RBI? The answer is yes, I will get the export benefit. Have a look at it people. This circular you are going to read yourself. Authorized dealer. done great now uh, say suppose in your question one compulsory question it is written export done under LUT or bond but payment received in INR in Vostro account permitted by RBI what will be the treatment in your output input output will you levy tax no. Will you get input for that? Obviously, yes. Because for exports, do you get credit? Yes, obviously. Export is regarded as equivalent to taxable supply. Okay. Then, small, small time limits have changed. Like, best judgment assessment. 30 days has been changed to 60 days and another extension of 60 days is allowed for furnishing the return what is 62 sir best judgment order if you fail to furnish return within 15 days from the notice we get a notice under 46 saying that if we don't file the return then officer will pass a best judgment order if officer has passed a best judgment order and if you file the return within 60 days then it is deemed to be revoked 
plus first 60 days will be extended by another 60 days however for the next 60 days you have to pay a late fee of 100 rupees per day important for plain theory question institute has asked section 62 I think once or twice plain theory question write about best judgment assessment or write about withdrawal of best judgment assessment order okay okay provisional attachment you remember provisional attachment provisional attachment is where see officer at present he is sure that if he does not freeze the bank account this person will run away to Dubai so he will freeze the bank account provisional attachment can be done for a maximum period of one year now the law clearly mentions this one year was there earlier also the law clearly mentions that if any encumbrance encumbrance meaning control if any restriction is placed on movable or immovable property then it will be removed on the written instruction for a commissioner or one year from order whichever is earlier what is the amendment sir this one year from order is the amendment but sir earlier also it was there law said that it can be for maximum one year but in this line na, written instruction by commissioner was written so what used to happen is until and unless commissioner has given a written instruction bank will never unfreeze the account now will the bank have to unfreeze the account after one year expiry the answer is yes because now even if commissioner has not given a written instruction commissioner's written instruction or one year whichever is earlier so now after one year provisional attachment will automatically come to an end and you know how good our officers are after one year to they start waking up now officers are very good huh? just on a lighter note if they are not there so much fraud will happen okay then 142b new rule added for intimation of certain amounts liable to be recovered under section 79 let me give you a background if there is a mismatch between 1 and 3b mismatch between 1 and 3b where you have reported more in 1 and less in 3b direct recovery can happen but there was no process given for that now the process is given in rule 142b so 142b is providing a process for the law which was already there if there is a mismatch between 1 and 3b direct recovery can happen because it is a self-assessed tax you are only saying that this is my tax if we don't pay that direct recovery can happen now the process is defined how will the process work sir we will send the intimation if the other person pays within seven days very good if he does not pay then in that case we will add it to e-liability ledger is it sir yes let's have a look where in accordance with 75 read with rule 88 c there is a mismatch between 1 and 3 b any amount of tax or interest which has become recoverable under 79 and the same remained unpaid proper officer shall intimate electronically on the common portal the details in DRC 1D directing the person to pay the amount with interest within 7 days and such amount shall be posted in e-liability ledger the intimation shall be treated as a notice for recovery where any amount of tax or interest specified in the intimation remains unpaid on the expiry of the period specified proper official shall recover the amount which remains 
unpaid. They can apply other modes of recovery. Okay. Okay. Do you remember appellate authority? What appellate authority, sir? Let me give you a background. If the order is passed by superintendent or ACDC, you go and appeal to additional commissioner, joint commissioner appeals. If the order is passed by additional commissioner, joint commissioner, then you go and appeal to commissioner appeal. You remember something like this? These three are called as adjudicating authorities. And these two, additional commissioner, joint commissioner appeals and commissioner appeal. These two are called as appellate authority. Now, when you file an appeal, can you file a manual appeal? The law now says, as may be permitted by commissioner, a person can also file a manual appeal. Okay. Sir, if I file an online appeal, when is the appeal set to be filed? Appeal is set to be filed when you receive a final acknowledgement. When will I get final acknowledgement, sir? First, you will get a provisional acknowledgement. Now, whatever is the date of provisional acknowledgement, that will be accepted if the order passed by proper officer is available online. Careful. There can be two cases where the order passed by proper officer is available online, where the order passed by proper officer is not available online. If the order passed by proper officer is available online, then the date of provisional acknowledgement will be date of filing appeal. And this will be mentioned in the final acknowledgement which will be issued. If order passed is not available online, if order passed is not available online, then you have to give the copy, certified copy, within 7 days. If you give the copy within 7 days, then same. Provisional acknowledgement will be the date of filing appeal. If you give it after 7 days, then in that case, date of submitting certified copy. And all this will be mentioned in final acknowledgement. Date of submitting final sorry date of submitting order which is self certified why are we reading this sir what is the relevance of date of filing appeal people you have to file the appeal within three months plus one month condonation do you remember this if you don't file within the time limit you cannot appeal is it sir yes Three months plus one month condonation is the time limit. Date of filing appeal is a very important date. Now what has government said? Try to recall. If the order against which you are filing an appeal is available online, date of provisional acknowledgement. If the order against which you are appealing is not available online, submit the order with certified copy within 7 days. If you submit within 7 days, provisional acknowledgement. If you don't submit it within 7 days, date on which the order is submitted. Are you clear with this? Case study based question, important. Let's read it. An appeal or application to appellate authority along with relevant documents shall be filed electronically and a provisional acknowledgement shall be issued immediately. 
However, an appeal to appellate authority may be filed manually only if commissioner has notified or the same cannot be filed electronically due to non-availability of decision or order appealed against on the common portal. And in such cases, provisional acknowledgement shall be issued immediately. You will get provisional acknowledgement immediately. Where an appeal to appellate authority is filed, a provisional acknowledgement is issued on the date of filing appeal. The following two circumstances are given in the law. Where order or decision appealed against is uploaded on the common portal. A final acknowledgement shall be issued and there is no need to submit self-certified copy of the order. And date of issuing provisional acknowledgement shall be the date of filing appeal. Where the order is not uploaded on the common portal, if the self-certified copy is given within 7 days, then date of issue of provisional acknowledgement. Otherwise, date of submission of certified copy will be the date of filing appeal. Is date of filing appeal a very important date? Yes. Try to recall. If order is available online, provisional acknowledgement. If order is not available online, if you submit it within 7 days, provisional acknowledgement. If you submit after 7 days, date of submitting order certified copy. Which order are we talking about? Let's see whether you are awake. Which order are we talking about? Consa order is available online. Ah, the one which you are appealing against, it is called as demand order or adjudication order. Clear? Great. Wonderful. Okay. Can you withdraw your appeal? Yes, withdrawal of appeal is permitted. Okay. Yes, withdrawal of appeal is permitted, but uh, before appellate authority passes an order or before appellate authority issues a notice. You can't withdraw the appeal once appellate authority has given a decision or they have issued a notice. <laughs> then you cannot. Otherwise, you just have to request. Order ke baad to kabhi nahi kar sakte. Notice ke baad, you'll have to just request saying that I want to withdraw and then it will be at the discretion of appellate authority. Let's have a look. Exceptions, exceptions ho sakte <laughs> The appellate at any time before issuance of show cause notice or before issuance of order, whichever is earlier, in respect of the appeal, may file an application for withdrawal of the appeal. However, where final acknowledgement is issued, withdrawal of the said appeal would be subject to approval from appellate authority and such application for withdrawal shall be decided within 7 days from filing the appeal. Any fresh appeal after such withdrawal shall be filed within the time limit specified under the provision. What is the time limit people? For SSE it is 3 months plus 1 month. 1 month is condemnation. Sir, but why will I uh, withdraw appeal? Say suppose it was not correctly drafted or not correctly written. I mean made a mistake while filing appeal. Then we withdraw. Or say suppose we just want to pay off the taxes. Then we withdraw. Okay. Appellate tribunal, not much has changed people. Earlier it was called as national bench. 
now it is called as principal bench there was a concept called as national or regional bench now it is replaced by principal bench which will be in delhi other than place of supply matters will be heard by state bench so place of supply matters will be heard by principal bench do you remember principal bench if they pass an order will you go to high court or supreme court or directly supreme court so directly supreme court and if it is other than place of supply then you will go to high court then you will go to supreme court this remains same what is the second change sir so here you will write amendment this is the first change principal bench state bench second change is now there will be principal bench at new delhi this is an amendment earlier they could have been principal bench plus regional benches it will consist of president judicial member technical member center technical member state totally four add kya hua hai sir ye on request of the state state may constitute state benches this is again an amendment because it will contain two judicial members one technical member for state one technical member for center totally four sir charo sath mein baithenge nahi ek judicial ke sath ek technical fir ek judicial ke sath ek technical to do do ka bench ban sakta hai can it can there be a single member bench also yes single member bench but there is a restriction up to 50 lakh ke cases they can hear more than that at least two then this is not an amendment b and c are not amendments just kept here because entire appellate tribunal point can be read from here then ha huh, this is an amendment okay you will read this and tell me can a single member hear a matter of 50 lakh exactly can a single member hear a matter of 50 lakh exactly great can two technical members hear a matter no there has to be one judicial member batao sir kyun technical members are officers who are now not officers may be retired judicial members are advocates or high court supreme court sorry not supreme court or court judges so who is more cap capable now i will not tell who is more capable but anyways both are capable in their own grounds judicial member is strong with law interpretation technical member is strong with idt interpretation our officers are very good at idt because they have been doing idt always but judicial members na wo log civil court cases bhi uh, hear kiye honge jaise murder etc is it sir yes okay now people two members are there can there be a dispute obviously yes what will we do read this and tell me have a look this is also an amendment
you got the point so you will refer it to the third member one interesting thing can state matter be referred to principal bench no no can principal bench matter be referred to state bench yes <laughs> that's how the law is as of now <laughs> yeah president because president is the head of the tribunal okay then there is no change here all other points remain same okay offenses and penalties 122b very important for exam case study people you know mr a now my friend has started a new website you can sell online small retail shops also can sell online he allowed one retail shop to sell from karnataka to kerala what can be the penalty on a 100 rupees nahi on a 1 lakh rupees sale liable at 18% if he was registered so can you tell me who will have to pay this tax and on whom will penalty apply read the provision and tell me no hurry read it very peacefully very important for case study you need to know this in depth e-commerce operator allowed the unregistered person to do a interstate supply of 1 lakh gst 18% you have to tell me the penalty and who is responsible to pay the tax on whom can penalty apply एवरीवन रेड पढ़ लिया अच्छे से ओके लेट स्टार्ट फर्स्ट हु विल बी लायबल टू पे टैक्स ऑन दिस अनरजिस्टर्ड पर्सन विल हैव टू पे हा बिकॉज ही हैज ब्रोकन अ कंडीशन ही विल हैव टू पे टैक्स ऑन दिस इज इट सर यस देन वॉट ही बी रेस्पॉन्सिबल टू पे दी टैक्स नाउ because now compulsory registration trigger triggers you have made a supply you have to pay the tax can tax be demanded from e-commerce operator never a hey, people please don't forget tax cannot be recovered from e-commerce operator who will be responsible to pay tax unregistered person the tax liability is not on e-commerce operator then penalty two penalties will apply normal 122 penalty on unregistered person 122 1 evasion of tax 122 1 b on e-commerce operator so unregistered person has to pay tax of 18000 unregistered person has to pay penalty of 18000 eco has to pay penalty of 18000 total earnings of government from one mistake can you please help me Fifty-four thousand on value of <laughs> someone had asked me some time back. 
sir can we can e-commerce operator allow to sell interstate allow government wants you to allow are you very clear with this yes this type of question i expect if the question paper is difficult you will have to answer from all the three angles from the unregistered persons angle from penalty 120 to 1 from penalty 120 to 1b clear with this yes okay keep a screenshot of this because this is something which is new to you and no book has question on this and sometimes now when paper is tricky institute will come up with new questions like these okay a uh, composition same same no 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 see composition also 18 18 18 because he also cannot sell outside the state so the penalty will be 10000 or tax involved as such supply has been made by a registered person other than person paying tax under composition scheme other than person paying tax under composition scheme is you will never say 1 lakh into 1% you will always say 1 lakh into 18% so the computation of penalty will be based on as if you are a registered person but not a composition registered person because composition is also a registered person na so this other than person paying tax under composition scheme is that you can't calculate 1% you have to calculate penalty based on 18% say hey, clear clear okay a hey, people uh, this is only for unregistered persons who what you see on amazon and flipkart are all registered persons people there are very few people at present i mean there are there, there is no one who is unregistered everyone is registered who are selling online we are only talking about this new open network digital commerce iske liye changes aaye hain okay a uh, value 1 lakh oh value 1 lakh sorry sorry value 1 lakh done 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 okay now prosecution have we read this uh, have we completed this yes yeah we have marked it already in our book i have just given you here so that it becomes easy for you to deal with all these provisions do you remember this 1 crore to 2 crore only for clause b yeah then all the all the provisions are same offenses a to f compounding clause b not allowed all this is same it's just given here do you remember this 25% and 100% compounding okay now government has prescribed compounding amount as well see they have said minimum and maximum na this also they have defined more than 5 crore 
or 2 crore to 5 crore how much will be the minimum how much will be the maximum in different cases a c d e up to 75 percent minimum 50 percent more than 2 crore up to 5 crore up to 60 minimum 40 for all others only 25 percent will not go to 100 until and unless they have done multiple crimes so can you tell me why b is not mentioned in this and why 1 to 2 crore is not mentioned cannot be compounded exactly right b cannot be compounded plus 1 to 2 crore applies only for clause b which is not compoundable that's why more than 5 crore and 2 crore to 5 crore okay great coming to the last provision miscellaneous provision consent based sharing of information furnished by taxable person iske baad interesting hai online money gaming now people if, in fact this is also something new tell me one thing if i need a loan will i have to submit documents to the bank or nbfc should i submit yes obviously if i need a loan i have to submit all the documents what if we get a tool that gst network communicates all the details of my sales etc to nbfcs and banks and nbfc gives a loan based on that kaisa hoga gst portal sends all the data to the nbfc nbfc based on that data computes eligible loan and gives it to my bank account good sir this has started a concept called as account aggregators what will this account aggregators do account aggregators are basically non-banking financial companies which will connect collect data of a person from the common portal and give them loan tell me one thing is my privacy getting affected when common portal is sharing this data with nbfc obviously yes sir how can common portal share my data with nbfc ah that's why this section has come a person has to give consent to the common portal for sharing that information if a person gives consent to the common portal then only common portal will share it why has this provision come so that people don't file cases against gst network understand the reason behind this the reason of bringing this provision is to avoid any litigation against gst network samajh mein aaya okay now another interesting thing bahut acha hai tell me one thing if my gstr1 data is shared does that mean recipient's data is also shared for b2b soch ke dekho gstr1 data is shared to nbfc now gstr1 will also contain details of my recipients for b2b transactions is it not affecting their privacy yes sir it is affecting their privacy what should be done you won't believe if i have given consent then it is deemed that all my recipient have given consent to me i have to take consent from all the recipients but common portal is not going to check that if i have given my consent matlab i have taken consents from my recipients that means if recipient has to file a case for privacy he will file against supplier or common portal sub recipient will file a case against supplier 
not against common portal this entire provision is just to do one thing safeguard the common portal from any litigation for sharing information if you have understood this trust me provision itna easily nikal jayega let's see consent based sharing of information furnished by taxable person the following details furnished by registered person may be shared by common portal with other systems as may be prescribed what is this other system sir other system is account aggregators hmm correct okay what all particular furnished in the application for registration oh all the details sir ha huh? partner you tell me one thing people if vijay malia is partner in a firm will bank give loan or nbfc give loan <laughs> okay or in the returns furnished under section 39 or section 44 then particular uploaded on the common portal for preparation of invoice details of outward supply under section 37 particular uploaded on the common portal for generation of eway bill or other particulars consent shall be obtained from the supplier for abc and from recipient for b to b and c only when such details include identity of the recipient we have to take consent from recipient abhi likha hua hai see it after that not withstanding anything contained in any law for the time being in force no action shall lie against government or common portal with respect to any liability arising consequent to information shared under this section and there shall be no impact on liability to pay tax on relevant supply as per the return government has safeguarded itself Central government, on the recommendation of council, has notified account aggregator as the system with which information may be shared by common portal. What is account aggregator? It's a NBFC which undertakes business of account aggregator. It will collect information, share it with banks and financial institutions. Where a registered person opts to share information with requesting system. the requesting system shall obtain consent of registered person for sharing information and shall communicate the consent along with tax period to the common portal requesting system kaun sa hai account aggregator the registered person shall give consent only after he has obtained consent from all the recipients to whom he has issued invoice and where he provides his consent the consent of recipient shall be deemed to have been obtained this is my favorite line in the law <laughs> supplier has to give consent of recipients if supplier has given consent deemed that recipient have also consented the common portal shall communicate information with the requesting system on receipt from the said system the consent of registered person details of tax period or the recipients in respect of which information is required clear with this yes okay okay people now you have to sit back relax and watch okay people online gaming industry anyone who plays uh, or creates a team on dream 11 
ड्रीम इलेवन और ऑनलाइन रम्मी और लूडो हाँ बहुत सारे आ गए नहीं ओके नाउ नाउ सी हाउ दी कॉन्सेप्ट वर्क्स देर आर टेन पीपल हु हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड हंड्रेड रुपीस दैट इज टोटल टेन रुपीज ईच टेन पीपल टोटल हंड्रेड नाउ दिस इज कलेक्टेड बाय दी ऑर्गेनाइजर दैट इज दी एप दे कलेक्ट दिस फर्स्ट प्राइज फिफ्टी सेकेंड प्राइज थर्टी एंड ट्वेंटी रुपीज इज कमीशन for organizer why will we play sir because 10 rupees becoming 50 5x everyone wants 5x return at the end they will lose everything that's different but everyone needs 5x returns so that's the incentive now on this 20 rupees was gst being discharged the answer is yes gst was being discharged on 20 rupees no problem on this 20 rupees gst was being discharged but government wanted gst on how much government wanted gst on 100 government said ki this field is growing so much let me also earn something out of it i need gst on 100 now online gaming industry said that we will not pay gst on 100 because 100 is a actionable claim and actionable claim is covered in negative list so actionable claim is covered in negative list there is no question of Paying GST on this, so ten ten rupees which I collect is a actionable claim, which depends on a subsequent event where a civil suit can be filed. It's covered by negative list, and actionable claim is regarded as goods. We will not pay GST. You remember actionable claim negative list says other than betting gambling lottery. Now officer said this is betting gambling lottery. but online money gamers were able to prove that this is a game of skill not a game of chance it's a game of skill not a game of chance as it is not a game of chance it is neither betting nor gambling nor lottery so gst will not be applicable ab now government got angry government said no no i want tax on this and that's when they added three more entries in this people betting gambling lottery was already there as a exclusion from negative list now there are three more exclusions from negative list online money gaming casino and horse racing so will gst be applicable on online money gaming entire 100 rupees the answer is yes gst will apply on entire 100 rupees is it sir yes then the organizer said we are not the suppliers one person is playing one person is winning they amongst themselves are suppliers and recipients we are just in between collecting that money and providing a platform we are not suppliers government changed the definition of supplier and government said anyone who is organizing such game and collecting money is deemed to be a supplier फिर और एक प्रॉब्लम आया जीएसटी विल अप्लाई ऑन हंड्रेड और ट्वेंटी गवर्नमेंट चेंज दी वैल्यूएशन रूल्स गवर्नमेंट सेड जीएसटी विल अप्लाई ऑन एंटायर हंड्रेड रुपीज सर वॉट इफ आई विदड्रॉ सम मनी आई डिपॉजिट एंड देन विदड्रॉ नो डिडक्शन वंस डिपॉजिटेड हंड्रेड रुपीज विल बी लाइबल टू जीएसटी सर आई वन फिफ्टी रुपीज 
and then I invest this 50 rupees again in a game, will GST apply? The answer is no. Your winnings will never be liable to GST. Winnings again used will never be liable to GST. So once GST is levied on the value which you deposit, that's it. GST will apply only once. But there is no deduction for withdrawal. If you are withdrawing some money, there is no deduction. Then came my important question. What will be the time of supply for this? Because actionable claim is goods. Do you remember date of payment is excluded? Date of payment is excluded for goods forward charge for time of supply. You remember people? Ah, yes sir, obviously date of payment is excluded for goods forward charge. Government amended that as well saying that there is one notification 66 2017 which says date of payment will not apply. Government said for all these date of payment is applicable. That means whenever you get that deposit GST will apply on that. Then the industry said we will run outside India. We will run outside India. How will you catch us? Government changed the provision saying that outside India person providing services to an Indian person is taxable under forward charge. This outside India person has to take registration in India and pay tax. Do you remember that this is similar to OIDAR service? Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So outside India person has to take registration in India and pay tax under forward charge. Then they said, outside India, say, jab India aega na, so this is goods. And goods coming from outside India to India are covered by customs law. So this will not be applicable. Government changed section 5.1. You remember 9.1.9.2.9.3.9.4? That was for CGST Act. IGST Act has 5.1.5.2.5.3.5.4. 5.1 says goods custom duty will be applicable. They said other than online money gaming and specified claims. Specified actionable claims. That is all these. These six will be liable to IGST. Then these people said, we will not register in, the, in GST. Government said, if you don't register, we will block you under Information Technology Act 2006. We will block you in that. Then they said, government, 20 lakh ka limit na, we will take registration only after 20 lakh. Government changed section 24, compulsory registration and said, you have to register mandatorily. You don't have an option. So, online money gaming industry, are they required to pay tax? Let me take you through this again. Then we will again read the provision. Let me start from the beginning. See this. It's very well done. Huh? That's why I did not discuss this in different chapters. Because there are so many chapters which get affected with this. And learning it in parts will not have fun. Let's read. Let's see. First, let me take you through. Then I will show you with the book. First, will GST apply on entire 100 rupees? Yes. Online money gaming, casino, horse racing, are they excluded from negative list? Yes. Is date of payment considered as time of supply for them? Yes. Any withdrawal of money, will it be allowed as a deduction? Sale minus sales return jase karte ho. Will it be allowed as a deduction? No. Something which you win, will that again be liable to GST? No. 
if we keep investing that money which we are winning will it be liable no only initial deposit is liable what about online money giving provided from outside india you have to pay under forward charge take registration Sim simplified registration but you have to take registration appoint a person in india appoint a agent in india compulsory registration yes though it is goods still igst will be applicable because section 51 is amended saying that even though it is goods still customs will not apply igst will be applicable on these specified services okay let's have a look at online gaming industry and remember online gaming includes money gaming but money gaming does not include online gaming kya sir dikhata hu dikhata hu because online gaming na is a service but online money gaming is goods be very careful with this let's see i'll show you this see this negative list and corresponding definition the term lottery betting gambling in negative list is replaced by specified actionable claim it means that these specified actionable claims will now be liable to gst specified actionable claims betting casino gambling horse racing lottery online money gaming now let's see what is online gaming and online money gaming online gaming means offering a game on the internet or electronic network and includes online money gaming online gaming includes online money gaming but online money gaming is also defined right here this is goods okay online gaming gaming means online gaming in which players pay or deposit careful money or money's worth including virtual digital asset you can play with bitcoin also in the expectation of meaning money or money's worth including virtual digital asset in any event including game scheme competition or other activity or process whether or not its outcome or performance is based on skill chance or both doesn't matter skill chance i need gst on everything whether the same is permissible or otherwise under any other law legal illegal no problem still allowed virtual digital assets will have the same meaning as income tax act okay additional proviso for the definition of supplier this you are going to read yourself and tell me whether dream 11 and uh, delta tech which is a company which runs rummy whether they are suppliers you will read and tell me i mean trust me i have not found a wider definition than this matlab <laughs> by him through him any type of consideration matlab i mean very very wide okay read this time of supply and tell me whether you have understood
understood great so will you consider date of payment yes date of payment is considered as time of supply for online money gaming okay valuation valuation 15.5 gives up power to the government to determine the value as may be prescribed now rule 31b and 31c is added rule 31b is for online gaming including money gaming and 31c is for casino sir what about horse racing horse racing ka 31a me diya hua hai 100% of bet value horse racing was already defined correct okay see this not withstanding anything contained in this chapter the value of supply of online gaming including supply of actionable claim involved in online money gaming shall be total amount paid or payable or deposited with the supplier by way of money or money's worth including virtual digital asset by the player whatever you are depositing that is liable provided that any amount returned or refunded for any reason whatsoever <laughs> including player not using the amount paid or deposited with the supplier for participating in any event shall not be deductible from value of online money gaming not deductible sir nahi ek bar deposit kar diya khatam this is what you have to write in exam in future all this can be challenged people because they have not made any change in supply definition because they are like it is already included in supply we are not sure for future for exam liable okay you are going to read 31c which is same but the explanation bahut acha hai read it and tell me whether you have understood Now explanation is saying that basically whenever you are you deposited once, then whenever you are using it for further games, na that will not be liable. Or whatever you win, then you use it for further games, that will not be liable. So at least the taxation will be only once when you deposit. But if you withdraw and deposit again, whether it will apply. yes so in fact this is one good point for uh, these people because wo kabhi nikalega hi nahi and one day to zero hona hi hai okay okay then section 5 of igst act there is a proviso in section 5 provided that integrated tax on goods other than goods as may be notified imported into india shall be levied under customs act so on all goods customs act but other goods 
the government has notified online money gaming as supply of goods on which igst will be levied and collected and not under customs law so on online money gaming directly igst will apply not customs law compulsory registration yes oidr excludes online money gaming because oidr is a service then do i have to take registration as a online money gamer gaming service provider yes if i am located outside india if i am not in taxable territory then i have to still pay in taxable territory there will be a simplified registration if i have a person in india then such person will get registration if i don't have physical presence still i have to appoint one person and pay tax what if i don't comply with this then in that case it act 2000 we will block it for public access circle block for public access block for public access okay which return will online money gaming service provider file same as oidr what invoice will he raise same as oidr what registration will he do same as oidr same sir same wherever oidr is mentioned all places online money gaming has been added understood people okay this came from 1st october 2023 Yes, first October two thousand twenty-three. Okay. Okay, we are left with only two topics. One is oh three, ethics, custom amendments. So, बहुत छोटा है. Goods RCM भी पांच मिनट लगेगा. Okay. First, let me tell you something about ethics. Can you tell me what all? or let me ask you first can you tell me what all ca does in uh, gst field what does ca do sir he gives certificates correct he files returns okay can i say advisory and other compliances advisory and compliance it will cover everything and then ek yaad hai special audit three things certificates advisory and compliance special audit because special audit can be done by cscma appointed by the proper officer now what has been mentioned in ethics chapter when you give a certificate you have to exercise due diligence when you give advisory or compliance you have to exercise ethical practices of not evading or not abetting the other person not helping the other person in evading tax when you do a special audit the correct information should be given to the department to take further actions what is ethics a rule of law which provides what is good and what is bad from a particular parameter that is called as ethics every person who is a practicing chartered accountant needs to take care that every report which he gives is true and correct in all respects and he has exercised his professional competence and there is no misconduct that's it Hmm? all these points repeated separately in different different paragraphs i am not sure what kind of question will come on this because they can ask you certificate certificate hum log kahan kahan dete hai sir refund agar 2 lakh se upar hai then ca certificate to say that there is no unjust enrichment then composition to regular 2 lakh se upar hai 
या एग्जेम टू टैक्सेबल टू लैक्स से ऊपर है या न्यू रजिस्ट्रेशन ले रहा है टू लैक्स से ऊपर है तब सर्टिफिकेट देना पड़ता है मर्जर डी मर्जर वो ट्रांसफर ऑफ बिजनेस हो रहा है आईटीसी ट्रांसफर हो रहा है तो ये सर्टिफिकेट की ट्रांसफर ऑफ लाइबिलिटीज हुआ है कि नहीं दैट पर्टिकुलर सर्टिफिकेट तो ये सारे सर्टिफिकेट लिखे हुए हैं एंड हर जगह प्रोफेशनल कंपिटेंस इज रिपीटेड लेट मी टेक यू थ्रू सम की पॉइंट I'll make you mark some key things, which will help you in writing exam answers. If at all this theory is asked, in my view, I don't expect something from this. But as you are the first examination, May twenty-four, at least know the basics, ethics, moral principles, which help in right and wrong, guiding decision, which is morally acceptable. Ethics will result in reduction in tax evasion. Unethical practices like bogus invoice, wrong ITC, create a uneven field. Role of chartered accountants to follow code of ethics given by ICAI. Integrity, objectivity, professional competence. You are aware of this. CA Act has professional or other misconduct audit you have to perform compliance certification and advisory functions properly act as a tax advisor correctly those who hold certificate of practice are not debarred from practice will represent the client for appellate authority and appellate tribunal high court supreme court we can't represent unless we are advocates give correct certifications now what all certifications do you give one i see on inputs if it exceeds 2 lakh this is when you apply within 30 days voluntary registration again itc on inputs composition to regular inputs and capital goods ye aapko itc chapter mein mil jayega exempt to taxable again inputs and capital goods second merger amalgamation ka certificate where you just have to certify that there has been a transfer of liabilities then you have refund of more than 2 lakh that there is no unjust enrichment you need to remember this word refund more than 2 lakh that there is no unjust enrichment then you have amount of itc to be reversed for cancellation of registration or switching or exiting from composition this is only when you don't have the stock details that he has examined all the books fir comes audit under section 66 special audit where the proper officer will direct you but this can be only for two things value and input tax credit so all these topics na you have already read in itc and audit and assessment chapters you have to be unbiased and impartial and he should take care and take steps to identify any potential conflicts that if you are doing the audit then you should not be a person who is filing his gst returns also which you learnt in audit chapter professional misconduct and apart from this specific roles chartered accountants may be specific scenarios where they are attesting documents or certificates as a general practice they issue all these documents with due care and due diligence samajh mein aaya great i'll just take 10 more minutes we should be able to conclude in 10 minutes come to the customs part customs part what is the change sir i mean change is something which will be prescribed in future 
you remember deferred payment scheme where all the consignments cleared from 1st to 15 days you can pay by 16th 16 till end of march sorry end of month you can pay by 1st of the following month if it is 16 to 31st march then you have to pay by 31st march you remember authorized economic operators correct authorized economic operators and authorized psus can take it what is the amendment sir this is the amendment and this is the amendment these two a further provide and amended further these are the two points which are amended baki sub same here so you will write a a here let's have a look whether it has any effect on our life these said rules have been further amended to provide central where central government considers it necessary it may under exceptional circumstances and reasons to be recorded allow payment to be made on different due dates this is a power which is given to government has government exercised any power no oh, these dates only apply future mein kisi aur ko they can give some other dates have they done it till now no will they do it don't know ab deferred payment shall not apply some cases you don't get deferred payment this first point is same as earlier second point the same has been further amended that eligible importer shall be permitted to make deferred payment shall be permitted to make deferred payment if he has paid the duty for bill of entry within the due date provided in deferred payment rules if he has paid the amounts within the due dates provided in deferred payment rules it is as good as he has paid within the due dates as prescribed kyunki yaha jo due date likha hua tha na it was not defined is this due date the normal due date first of all do you remember the normal due date for paying custom duty let me give you a recall if you are filing bill of entry today you have to pay today the day you file bill of entry that day you have to pay custom duty now the question was is due date ka matlab kya hai ye due date bill of entry ka due date hai ya due date as provided in deferred payment scheme which due date are we talking about in this now it has been clarified that here due date will mean due date in deferred payment rules that is these due dates and any differential duty for same bill of entry on the next day of reassessment this remains same ye na normal case mein bhi yahi hai even in normal case you have two due dates for payment of custom duty first is due date for bill of entry the day when you file bill of entry that day if it comes back after reassessment say suppose you pay 100 rupees but officer says 120 and he sends it back to you this 100 rupees you have to pay on bill of entry date 20 rupees you have to pay on next day after you get the reassessment from the proper officer next day remains same here also but ye jo due date hai due date meaning due date as provided in deferred payment scheme that's what they have provided can we get a question on deferred payment sir now that customs is reduced to 20 marks because your gst will be for 80 marks and customs will be for 20 marks i don't expect such question but as it is an amendment you should at least know deferred payment properly that would be sufficient okay. e-cash ledger e-cash ledger there is e-cash ledger in customs courier shipments in international courier terminal have to make payment through e-cash ledger from 112 2023 other exemptions continue as it is so earlier 
see uh, you have to make custom payment through e cash but there are some exemptions given like baggage 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 will you pay baggage through e cash ledger nahi and if there are some special kinds of duties will you pay that through e cash ledger no so those are paid separately by online transfer baki sab have to be paid through e cash international courier terminals they were also allowed not to use e cash ledger but from 112 2023 they are required to use e cash e cash deposit in e cash then use it that's it which is similar to gst clear great okay now people do you remember services rcm you remember we made a small story for services rcm yes services rcm mr a was a director in a music company he received a call from terrorist company arranged residential accommodation insurance agent security services he was killed by a recovery agent government rbi all these points we had discussed now i want to take it further mr a was killed by a recovery agent let me give you a history of what that recovery agent used to do earlier uska purana life batata hu main aapko this recovery agent was actually a agriculturist is it sir yes and you know what he used to sell after producing cashew nut but not that entire cashew without peeling the upper layer bd tobacco leaves raw cotton he used to also get priority sector loans is it sir yes because there are priority sector loans for agriculture every bank has to give some portion of its loans to farmers required sir yes so he used to get that loan then he started trading in essential oils which essential oils sir by peppermint etc he started trading in these essential oils after that he got into manufacturing see the progress ah huh, from agriculture to trading to manufacturing and he started manufacturing silk yarn from raw silk he started manufacturing that after that he started distributing lottery and became a lottery distributor and developed a lot of contacts and ye na wo chori ki gaadiyan kharidte bechte na so what he used to do is he used to buy used vehicles which are getting auctioned central government or police department na if they find a vehicle which is related to theft they'll keep it in their control and then they will auction it so he used to purchase those used vehicles from government and finally he started his business of recovery agent after giving up all this now what is all this sir now all these things are goods which are covered under rcm let me take you through this again he was an agriculturist for four products cashew bd tobacco leaves raw cotton it was considered as a priority sector so he used to get a lot of loans he started trading in essential oils after that started manufacturing silk yarn 
lottery distributor finally for confiscation after any goods are confiscated when government is selling all this he started purchasing all those confiscated or used and old vehicles all these goods are covered under rcm goods rcm was not there in your syllabus earlier 31st december 2023 when institute came up with study guidelines they have included goods rcm in your syllabus now they will give you a specific goods and you will have to see whether it is under forward or reverse don't forget one important aspect everything other than this is under forward charge so you need to be very strong with this because if you make a mistake in this and apply forward charge two impacts you will be discharging output and you will be taking itc yaad rakhna whenever it is rcm you will not get itc on your purchase and you will not pay any output it is the recipient's responsibility but by mistake if you do forward charge in this you will make a twin mistake one you will spoil output tax second you will spoil input tax and that's the reason remembering these entries become essential let me show you the entries wordings are very very critical who is the supplier who is the recipient will you be able to remember with this story i'll ask you that after you have read all the points let's see the points agriculturist not any other person agriculturist and who is a agriculturist individual or huf cashew nut not shelled or peeled that means raw cashew raw cashew not the cashew nut which you have bd wrapper leaves tendu leaves tobacco leaves raw cotton who has to pay any registered person because these will manufacture tobacco from that people please understand what is the reason of reverse charge mechanism shifting the liability from a weaker person to a stronger person do you remember this shifting the liability from a weaker person to a stronger person that's what government is doing these farmers will not be able to pay but the registered person who is going to make tobacco he'll be able to pay tax essential oils other than citrus fruit again registered person all these are covered which you saw that you don't get refund also for all this under igst manufacturer of silk yarn to any registered person because the other registered person will make silk sarees out of that is it yes i'll manufacture silk yarn which is normally done by the farmers only and then registered person will have to pay because he will manufacture sarees lottery by government to lottery distributor or selling agent people tell me will government pay tax under forward charge they shifted the liability under reverse charge central government excluding railways because railways is completely covered by forward charge selling used vehicles seized or old vehicles registered person will have to pay so anyone buying in auction government goods recipient will pay the tax last one priority sector lending certificate to any registered person what is this priority sector lending certificate sir very simple see every bank has to give a specified percentage of loan to priority sector say suppose this percentage is 20 it's not very high but 20% is the percentage now bank a has given 40% to priority sector bank b has given 5% of its loans to priority sector will rbi catch bank b obviously yes sir rbi will catch bank b now what government has allowed is bank a can earn some extra money by selling 
priority sector certificates and bank b will be able to meet the statutory requirement so bank a will sell priority sector lending certificates because it is more than the limit of 20 and bank b will buy it ye hota hai sir ha this is done online who has to pay tax on this recipient why sir because these are traded on a platform where you don't get to know who is the seller bank so it's not possible for the seller bank to pay under forward charge hence government shifted these to reverse charge mechanism and the recipient has to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism and don't forget in this normally it is banks banks don't get full itc you remember banks take 50% ITC and reverse 50% ITC institute may mix it with that if they want to create a tricky paper Paki otherwise they will give you goods RCM in simple terms clear with this yes okay yeah those are goods because even uh, they are tradable na? the moment it becomes tradable it is a commodity so this was the end of your amendments wishing you all the best for your examination and now i'll take any further questions which you have